So guys what if Naruto was secretly married with Yuga movie? The clock kept ticking as Naruto was deep in thought. Today he would meet his sensei, the person who would guide him in the way of the shinobi. Now Naruto knew what a shinobi's life was like having experienced it firsthand, not being able to know who to trust. This world was just dark. He had spent five years in the academy hiding his strengths. Or if a civilian council knew before he was an official shinobi and out of their grasp, who knew what they would try and stick on him. No, he had played the fool, the joker, the idiot of the class, a loud brash mouthed fool who was dubbed as the dead last his class. But no more, now that he was a shinobi, and under the rule of the Hokage, he could be free of this personality. Of course the Hokage knew of his skills as a shinobi in fact it was him who recommended Naruto to play the fool, and to this day he still thanked the man, thanks to his ingenious idea to hide his skill, Naruto was able to get around much more freely, no one would have guessed he was a problem. The council got updates on his progress in class, and they left him alone to his own devices, deciding he was a minimal risk, what with him being the dead last, and he would act his true self. Self. He wanted to let this side of him run loose for the final time today. He wanted to get a feel of how his sensei would act towards him, if he really was allowed. Hot-headed fool wearing an almost illuminating orange jumpsuit. The door to the class opened and the class quietened down, wanting to know if it would be them who gets taken to leave next. First walked a man with brown eyes and short black spiky hair. He had a V-shaped beard with a cigarette in his mouth. He wore a green Kanoha flak jacket with black pants and black shinobi sandals. He also had a sash with the kanji for fire on it. That man was Asuma Suratobi, son of the third and current Hokage. The second to walk in was a woman, and Naruto's breath hitched when he saw who it was what she doing here. She never told me she was a Jonin sensei thinking hard Naruto was in shock, why didn't she tell him? The woman in question had long black wild hair that reached her shoulder blades. She had blood red crimson eyes. She wore a red mesh armor blouse with only a right sleeve. She had a bandage-like material over her blouse with a thorn-like pattern going through the middle of the bandages. Her hands were wrapped in smaller bandages up to her elbows. She also wore bandages on her upper thigh as a type of shorts. She was Kurana Yuhi, Kanoha's Junjutsu mistress, Ice Queen of Kanoha and Naruto's wife. He stared at her from his seat in the back row. She returned it, but her usual cold exterior softened when she met his eyes promising to explain later, he accepted it and gave her a small smile showing he understood, this made her slightly sigh in relief. Asuma noticed the sigh and slightly raised an eyebrow in thought, but quickly brushed it aside as nothing, so he decided he would be the first to talk, Team 10 with me, Kurinai followed suit and spoke Team 8 with me. Upon hearing Team 8 Kiba looked up to see his new sensei. As soon as following the voice he started drooling like a dog in heat. No one could deny that his sensei was a beauty. Anyone who did must have been blind even to suggest it. Oh yes this would be perfect. He would use his charms and natural alpha male status to make his move. Upon seeing Kiba staring at Kurinai, Naruto sighed and suppressed a chuckle. Oh this would be brilliant. He just hoped Kiba didn't do anything too stupid. As Kurinai was well known for her anti-pervert jinjutsu. With Kiba being a rookie with no experience with stronger jinjutsu, there was no way he could break out of it. Oh the horror of that jinjutsu. Naruto's spine, shivered at the thought of it. The of course was the practice when it was finally completed, Kurinai had stated that if it could make her lover stop in his thoughts about what she would do to him if he continued perving, then imagine what it would do to a stranger. It had taken two weeks to be able to look at Kurinai again in the same way, only in fear of what would happen if she caught him looking. Of course Kurinai had taken it upon herself to nurse Naruto back to normal, and made sure to show him that he was allowed those thoughts and glimpses. As the two teams walked out Kurinai briefly looked back at Naruto and gave one more smile before she walked out as well. Naruto looked at his two teammates, to say he was disappointed with who he was put with was an understatement. He was paired with a pink-haired harpy who worshipped the ground of his other teammate. To make matters worse she was a complete fail in the shinobi arts, only managing a pass with her knowledge and chakra control due to her small reserves. It got worse in order to keep up his idiot persona, he acted as if he had a crush on her, and she would refuse every time resulting in a hit to his head. He had cursed her many a time on it, but still kept up the idiot act. His second teammate was a self-named Avenger with a superior already complex. Naruto cold really blame him all that much for what his brother did. He didn't know what he would do if someone killed Kurinai. However, it did not excuse him for treating everyone else like dirt. The fact that everyone still worshipped him was what gave him a huge ego boost, along with a stick up his ass. As far as shinobi skills went he was pretty good for his age, strongest in his class if you don't include Naruto. A team of three waited in silence and was silently waiting for their sensei. Finally after two hours a man walked in. He had gravity-defying silver hair. A leaf had hiatus across his left eye with a face
face mask covering the bottom part of his face. He wore a dark blue undershirt with two red swirls on either shoulder. He wore a green Kanoha flak jacket and black Anbu style pants and shinobi sandals. Kakashi Haddock, Sharingan no Kakashi and the son of Sakumo Haddock, Kanoha's white fang. Mm. My first impression on you all is I hate you, meet me in the roof in five minutes he said before disappearing in a shunshin. The first to walk up was Sasu who looked back at the gaping faces of his two teammates and giving a HN and continued walking. Slowly the other two walked up with him towards the roof. roof. After five minutes the three made it to the roof of the academy and was all sitting on a red bench that went around the rooftop, looking at a bored-faced Kakashi who was reading an orange book. So you three why don't you introduce yourselves? Kakashi started off, disabling the silence. Um, what do you mean sensei? Was Sakura's response. Sai let me go first, my name is Kakashi Haddock my likes, you don't need to know, my dislikes, again you don't need to know, my hobbies, well you're too young for those, and my dreams, I don't feel like telling you Kakashi finished with a eye smile, Sakura and Sasuke face fell upon hearing that. Naruto however spoke up, Kakashi Haddock also known as Sharingan no Kakashi, a ranked ninja in the bingo book, I will describe how I classify ninja at the bottom of the story, and known as the third strongest ninja in Konoha at present time, after the golden storm and the Hokage, Kakashi stared at Naruto, wondering how he got that info. Only Chunin were allowed to get the bingo book, and even then only the upper level Chunin, that and no one under the rank of Chunin, knew of the golden storm. Hell even he didn't know who the guy was only that he was young, and probably only a teenager. Sakura and Sasuke just gaped at Naruto's knowledge on their sensei. This was Naruto they're talking about. The dead last the one who couldn't do a simple bushin. Kakashi decided to voice his curiosity. How did you know all that? Hell how do you know about the golden storm? his curiosity hidden in its usual lazy tone. Naruto smirked and said one word, spoilers. Bakashi sighed, then shifted his gaze at Sakura who was still gaping like a fish at Naruto. And you can go next pinky earning a tick mark on Sakura's forehead. My name is Sakura. She practically screeched that part out, earning three headaches, I like, looks at Sasuke and giggles I hate Naruto Baka. My hobbies include looks at Sasuke and blushes my dreams for the future are, looks at Sasuke and giggles again, earning a shiver going down said boy's spine. Okay, emo you're next he said pointing at Sasuke, getting a glare in response. HN, my name is Sasuke Uchiha, I don't particularly like anything and hate a lot of things, I have a dream, no an ambition, to restore my clan and kill a certain someone, upon hearing that the other three had mixed thoughts. Sasuke kuns, su kual. An Avenger Sai looks like him going to have to at least get him to tone it down. Ah Itachi Uchiha, haha <laughs> at his current skill he has no chance. Bakashi nodded sagely, and finally you Goldilocks. Naruto's right eyebrow twitched at his nickname. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like Raymond, Ichirikus especially. My, I don't trust you enough on that this caused Kakashi to raise a eyebrow. I dislike perverts, rapists, child beaters or those who do unjust wrong to others. My dream is to be the Hokage and have a family Naruto finished with a bright smile. What a baka. I'm interesting, dope what are you hiding? I think I need a chat with Hokage Zama later. Well now, now that we know each other a bit better I think it's time I tell you about the test spoke Kakashi before Sakura suddenly spoke up obviously confused. Test what test? We already did our test sensei. At this Kakashi just eyed smiled, you didn't think that becoming a full genin was just passing a written exam and some small test did you? This of course caused Sakura to blush slightly as she actually did. Now as I was saying there will be a test tomorrow morning, and I expect you all to be there at the 7th training ground, and I want you all there at 7 am sharp, and don't eat breakfast as you just throw it up during the test, spoke Kakashi, after which he saluted the three genin, and then disappeared in a whirl of leaves, as soon as Kakashi left. Naruto jumped off the roof and disappeared in thin air. Outside Hokage room, Asuma and Kura and I were waiting for Kakashi to arrive so they could meet with the Hokage and decide what to do with their teams, after the first 30 minutes of silence Asuma gathered enough courage to start a conversation with Kurinai, after another 30 minutes he gathered enough courage to ask her out. Um Kurinai, I was um, wondering if, um, if you could, um, I mean if you would like to grab some lunch. Upon hearing the question Kurinai froze, of course she had many men ask her out before, however they were people she did not know and had almost no previous contact with, but Asuma on the other hand had known her for three years now, in fact since she made Jonin, she had to choose her words carefully not to offend the man next to her. Luckily she was saved by the last person she expected to be there at the time. Hey. Arend you two the Jonans from the academies. The two in question quickly whizzed their heads around to see a young blonde boy who was wearing a bright blinding orange jumpsuit, they're grinding while scratching the back of his neck, he was patting himself on the back for his save. Her and I eyed him up, reminding herself that they were in public, and she cold just glump him at how adorable he looked, she gave him a warm smile and spoke first, yes, and you must be Uzumaki Naruto the dead last she gave herself a mental pat on the back for that one, it was an inside joke between the two of them, Naruto being possibly one of the strongest shinobi in the world, reduced to the dead last of his 
his class, oh how she loved his face when he was frustrated and when he started shouting things like just you wait till I graduate. Or hell still kick your round A, she started blushing thinking of what that memory led to. Naruto gave her his best scowl and then a pout, HN, I might be the dead last, but it'll still be the best hokage there will be. He ended with determination in his eyes, oh how Kuro and I wish they were alone he was just so cute when he got that look in his eyes. Asuma watched and gave a full-blown laugh, he was slightly peeved about the squirt ruining the chances of an answer, but he would wait until after the meeting to get an answer. Naruto gave Asuma a scowl, there were two reasons behind this, the first was because he was laughing at Naruto, obviously not believing he could achieve his goals and mocking him, the second was for him trying to hit on his wife, however then again it's not his fault, I mean Kurenai is beautiful fears no doubt about it, but Naruto couldn't help but feel protective of his wife. Suddenly poof, now standing to Asuma's right was Kakashi, still reading his little orange book. Yo, he gave a two-finger salute not even looking up while doing it. Kakashi-sensei. Naruto shouted. Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Was this the same kid who was all calm and knew too much information for his own good? He shook his head and chuckled. Kurenai getting tired of just standing there decided it was time to get the meeting underway. Okay now that Kakashi's here we can finally have our meeting. Goodbye Naruto-kun she cursed for her slip-up. While well, the other two raised eyebrows at her. Naruto noticing the slip-up decided to defuse the tension. So he blushed and stuttered. You um gg goodbye kk Kurenai ch sensei. Well he finished with confidence, still with a blush on his face, he gave himself a pat on the back and a chibi Naruto in his head, holding up a banner that read perfect 10. While the other three went inside the Hokage's office Naruto disappeared in a yellow flash. Hokage's office. Asuma, Kakashi and Kurenai were now standing before the Sandame Hokage, here is in Suratobi. He had a grey beard, which was as similar to Asuma's own beard. He wore a red and white hat with the kanji for fire on it, and wore same color robes. He was the Sandame Hokage, Kami no Shinobi and the Professor, Asuma, Kakashi and Kurenai. I was expecting you for some time now all eyes fell on Kakashi who was scratching the back of his neck with a eye smile. Sorry but I was on my way here when a black cat crossed my path, so I took the long way around. Everybody in the room sweat dropped at Kakashi's obvious lie. Off now if you could please proceed and tell me your beginning thoughts on your students here is in spoke up making everyone suddenly go professional. Asuma Saratobi, sensei of Team 10, believe that my current three students have a chance to achieve far and become the second coming of their parents, from what I have observed of them and read in their files, suggests that Choji Akamichi is laid back and sometimes hesitates to interact due to his weight, which is needed for his clan jutsu. His insecurity would need a bit of work, and so will his stamina. Shikamaru Nara is lazy and very laid back, he is however a genius like many of the Nara clan, however he goes beyond the normal standards of Nara geniuses, he is however extremely lazy, and I could he believes stuff such as training to be troublesome, Ino Yamanka, is only explainable by the words, fangirl. She has a huge crush on one Sasuke Chiha and makes him sound better than Kami-sama, she is lacking in the ninja field, however, should she break out of her fangirl stage, she has possibilities to surpass her father, Asuma finished by taking another drag from his cigarette. Kurenai Yuhi, sensei of Team 8, believe that my current students have the possibility to be a great hunter team, from the school reports, and what I have analyzed from my team, I am able to make the following statements, Shino Aburam, is a normal stocky Aburam who is quiet, calm and cool, headed when the situation needs it, he is a bit shy, and I believe it is from people being scared of him when he was younger due to the bugs, Kiba and Zunka is loud, brash, hot-headed and a pervert when she said that she got a tick mark on her head, after I gave him my special treatment, I believe that will now lessen the males in the room shivered, the Git Kurine special Jinjutsu was hell on earth, and could scar a man mentally for life and not a Hayuga, is the opposite to any Hayuga you could meet, she is warm-hearted and very kind, not keeping a cold Hayuga exterior, she is however very unsure of herself, and that leads to her inferiority complex, should she come out of her shell, she could become a very proficient ninja. She finished with a smirk. The Kashi Haddock, sensei of Team 7, believe that my current students, should they pass, have the promise to become one of the strongest teams Konoha has ever created. Sakura Haruno like Ino Yamanka is a fangirl, and has small chakra coils, which need a lot of development, however she has near-perfect chakra control which makes up for it, Sasuke Ichiha. Rookie of the year and the last remaining Ichiha is as the reports say, cold and distant, he is however an able shinobi and has untapped potential, Naruto Uzumaki, the dead last as far as I've seen him confused, at this Asuma raised an eyebrow, the other two however, had a pretty good image as of what he is talking about, Asuma chose to voice his confusion and spoke up, what do you mean? 
This caused Kakashi to turn to him and speak well one minute he was loud hot-headed just as the report said he was, then he goes on and talks about me and my ranking and strength in the Kanoha military, hell he even possess knowledge on the Golden Storm, and as far as I know only the clan heirs knew about him from what their parents had told them. Siritobi chose this moment to speak up and diffuse the situation that is irrelevant at the moment. Tomorrow you will give your team a test to decide, shall they pass or not, from what I hear this batch of teams has the highest chances of passing. Dismissed he heard a chorus of haste and turned around to look at Kanoha through the glass behind him, oh things will certainly get interesting from now. As for the Jonans outside, Asuma was about to continue on his advancement on Kurinai but before he could say anything she had shunshined away. Naruto's apartment. Naruto was laying down on his bed looking at his ceiling, thinking about all he had completed in his life so far, and yet now was the beginning of it. He was five when he was first trained by the Hokage in complete privacy. No one knew about it. It all started after one assault on Naruto turned bad, and he was in intensive care. The gang of men thought it would be funny if they would try and kill the demon, as they so beautifully said it. He had both of his lung punctured, a broken spine, internal bleeding in six different places and a broken neck. If they were allowed to continue, then he would have surely been dead, but they did not continue as for Naruto that night was his worst and best night of his life, it was the night he met Kurinai, flashback, Naruto slowly opened his eyes and quickly shot up wincing when he felt it hard to breathe, he looked around and could tell he was in the hospital, just then a nurse came in the door and looked at him before running away somewhere, beside people were always either running from him or trying to hurt him, why he didn't know, he then noticed another presence in the room and turned to see the seat next to him, on there was a young girl no older than 12 sitting there sleeping peacefully. Peacefully. She had long wild black hair that reached her mid-back. She wore black anbu-style pants with a mesh undershirt and a red jacket to go over it. In his eyes she was beautiful. Too bad when she woke up she would run like all the others. The door to the hospital room was flung open, and there walked in here is in Saratobi, the Sandame Hokage. Naruto-kun how are you feeling? He asked in a quiet tone. It was a miracle the boy was even alive, let alone up and awake. Naruto gave a small smile and replied him much better now thank you Jiji. The Hokage gave a sigh and spoke you gave us quite a scare you know. Yao have been knocked out for almost two weeks now. Now Naruto blinked in surprise t two weeks. The sand aim flinched before nodding, Naruto stared down at the covers and started thinking, two weeks I've never been unconscious for that long, Kami. Im useless, then it clicked in Naruto's head, we. The Hokage smiled and nodded before speaking yes, you see if it were not for Kurinai-chan there, then we may have arrived too late, Naruto instantly looked at the girl next to him, she was his savior. That meant that someone cared. She had saved him and by the looks of things kept on coming back to visit him. She was like his guardian angel. Kurinai started to shift in her sleep, slowly blinking before yawning and giving a stretch, only to be met by a smiling Hokage and a small young boy she had saved two weeks ago. Kami the kid was a mess when she found him, she only wondered how he was alive now, she had been coming home from team training, when she had heard people shouting and went to investigate, what she saw horrified her. She was seeing four fully grown men beating and stabbing a young boy. She had instantly gotten into action. As a genin of Kanoha she had the right to stop and apprehend any crimes, so she killed them, it was her first kill, and she didn't care, they were scum the lowest of the low torturing a young boy, she rushed him to the hospital, and she was shocked when she was refused service of the boy. Luckily the head doctor rushed to her side and helped the boy out, since then she had been coming back to see him every day and wait for him to wake up. Ah Kurinai-chan so nice of you to wake up the Hokage teased her with a smile on his face. Kurinai blushed, she was truly embarrassed, while she was sleeping the young boy had woken up and was with the Hokage. Naruto saw her eyes and was instantly captured by them. They were so, so red and warm, so inviting. Now Naruto didn't know what he was feeling at the moment, whether it was gratitude for what she had done or something else all he knew was that this girl had helped him in his time of need and he would be forever in her department. Beautiful Naruto muttered under his breath. However silent it was it wasn't enough because both the Sandame and Kurinai heard it making her blush. Naruto instantly returned back to normal and got up on his feet. His whole body ached, but he felt he had to do this. This, Naruto slowly went up to Kurinai and gave a deep bow thank you Kurinai-chan for saving my life and caring for me. You have no idea how much it means to me at first Kurinai had no idea what to do, of course she knew who he was, Naruto Uzumaki the host of the Kaiubi no Yoko, she was there at the Sandame's announcement and at first she had hated him, like all the villagers. However when she started to go to the academy and learned more about sealing she had accepted that it was not his fault as he was just a baby at the time, he did not choose to bear the burden, but for him to say that one simple act of kindness meant so much to him. She started to tear, how could he be so young and so broken? 
So she did the one thing she could think of, she hugged him, she gave him a full hug with all her heart, at first he was frozen, but slowly he reacted to the hug and hugged back and whispered in her ear thank you, at that moment she decided she won't let him be alone again, not as long as she still had a breath in her body, flashback end, after that the sand dame had explained to him about the Kai Ubi, and why people hated him so much, he thought it was stupid, and now he had an idea of what they may have felt, for if he ever lost Kurenai there was nothing that would stop him upon getting revenge, after he was released from the hospital, the Hokage had started to train him in private, while leaving a cage Bushin to do his normal paperwork, when he was 7 Naruto was already an air rank ninja, and Saratobi had decided to tell Naruto of his parents, Minato Namakas and Kashina Yuzumaki, his dad and mum, to say he was shocked was an understatement, he had cried when he was told finally able to be at rest with who he was, he had searched on both his mum and dad for any information on family, he was torn up when he learned that his mum was the last survivor of the Yuzumaki clan he had a clan, but what really upset him was to find out that his father had no data on parents at all, it was just one big blank that it made him strive to become stronger to live up to his parents' name, and it worked, by the time Naruto was 10, he was a S-class ninja in all but experience, so to work around it, the Hokage had given him an undercover identity known as Gold, it was at this time when he started taking A and S rank missions for the village, and at that time, he started to learn his father's signature moves and how to control his bloodlines, he held three bloodlines, three very unique bloodlines, the first was from his father who had a godly affinity for wind, water and lightning, which led to him seizing the Rantan and Hyoten release. Now his third bloodline was one he never expected to gain, not in a thousand years, Mokuten. He had the sacred wood element of the Shadame Hokage. How he achieved it was beyond him, but he was very thankful for it, as it did come with a lot of bonuses. Upon activating the bloodline a couple of months before his 11th birthday, his whisker marks disappeared. Dude Mokuten being able to subdue Biju, it was also able to stop the features he received from containing the beast. At first he was worried if it would mess with his healing rate, but that was what made it all the much better, because the seal slowly leaks Kaiubi chakra into Naruto, the Mokuten instantly dilutes it changing it into Naruto's own chakra, he was worried that if he was ever to go into his Jinjuriki cloak, tailed form, it would seriously backfire upon him, that however was shot down by a discovery that is no less than amazing, instead of going into a orange chakra cloak, Naruto goes into a golden version, think Kaiubi mode at the waterfall, after controlling the nine tails color, on Naruto one tailed mode, he had yet to fully control the Kaiubi, but that would be in the future, thanks to his bloodlines Naruto had seven elemental affinities including his bloodlines, they were wind, lightning, earth, water, storm, ice and wood, another help was Naruto's water abilities, thanks to his Hyoten and Mokuten, leading to a strong water affinity, he was able to pull water out of the molecules in the air, like the second Hokage, all of these factors led to Naruto by the time he was 12 being classed as a SS rank ninja, however even through all his prowess he never let it once get to his head, he even started dating Kurenai after she kept on seeing him and looking after him, well and not exactly dating more like boyfriend-girlfriend, as they wanted it to be a secret until Naruto was a legal ninja, after his 10th birthday Naruto had asked Kurenai to marry him, and she had accepted, they had gone to the Hokage who had completed it in private, and pronounced them husband and wife, now the rings they wore were very special, they were white platinum enhanced in strength by chakra, they had two sealing arrays on them, one for Naruto's Hiroshin Jutsu, which was red for some reason, and another for Kurenai's Jinjutsu which hid the rings, as long as there was chakra through the ring the Jinjutsu would stay activated, he stopped his train of thoughts as he heard the door to his house close, he was currently living in a house close to the outskirts of the village, the land and house were purchased under the Hokage's name, so no one would question it, it was also hidden and protected by hundreds of seals, each one had its own part to play, and there she walked into the room, his princess and whole life, he budged over on the bed and motioned her to lay down with him, which she quickly complied to, when she was on the bed, she gave him a passionate kiss on the lips which he followed suit, they then laid there enjoying the silence with Naruto having his left arm around Kurenai, and Kurenai resting her head on his chest above his heart, listening to his heartbeat, Naruto broke the silence when he spoke up when did you decide you wanted to be a sensei, he was curious as to when she decided to accept it, well they sort of just sprung it on me, and I accepted, it's not a problem, is it? Kurenai asked slowly wondering if she upset him, she cold handled that he was her world, and she loved with all her heart, she didn't want to be the reason of making him angry, Naruto looked down only to see Kurenai's own red orb stare back at him, he continued to look into them mesmerized by her beauty, before speaking, no, it's not a problem, why would it be, you can certainly take care of yourself if need be, and I think it's great you're passing on your knowledge and expertise, I mean who doesn't want to learn from you, he finished playfully eyeing her up and down, Aka, she playfully slapped his chest after sighing in relief, she was by no mean a fangirl, nor was he in control, it was just something like this was a huge decision, and usually one discussed with your partner, the two stayed in silence again for a few minutes before Kurenai broke the silence, just how much are you going to show of your power? 
I mean the Hokage said that in five months that's when he will reveal who you are, she asked genuinely curious of what he would do. He sighed while using his right hand to flow through his hair. I was thinking only using my normal affinities during the time and only going at a fifth of my speed. But then I was thinking, what if the situation called for it and we were up against a S rank or a group of A rank missing ninja. So I thought about it and decided it'll show them who I am if the situation calls for it and it'll take charge, however I highly doubt it. I mean it'll only be a genin for five months or so. He finished with a smirk on his face. I can't can't wait to see the faces of Sasuke team and that harpy Sakura. God that will be hilarious. He finished with pumping his fist into the air, causing the bed to shake a bit. Her and I giggled, don't forget Kakashi's face. Now that would be priceless, especially when he finds out who you are, they shied and calmed down. Naruto looked down at her and raised his chin to look him in the eye for kissing her with all his heart. I love you, my princess he said to her in a voice full of it emotion. She smiled and replied I love you, my prince. The two got changed into their night clothes before getting into bed. Kurenai came from behind Naruto and hugged him from behind, wrapping her arms around his waist. It made her feel secure to be able to hold him tight. He was her teddy bear that protected her. He responded by taking her hand and kissing it and turned around to face her. He gently kissed her forehead and they went to sleep. Training ground 7. 9 a.m. Naruto made it to the training ground, finally being able to loosen himself up and dress in the proper manner of a shinobi and not the monstrosity he had worn at the academy. He was currently wearing black anbu pants with black shinobi sandals. He had his ankles bandaged up over his pants. He wore a yellow t-shirt under a black sleeveless hooded jacket. DSK, Oak team they exchanged their nicknames before smiling at each other. They had a sort of rivalry not in strength because Naruto would kill him there. Not that Sasuke knew. No, they had an insult rivalry where they would try and insult the other into submission. No one won. Naruto yar late bellowed Sakura before she took in Hess' appearance and his well-formed arms which were sleek and well-developed. She blushed slightly at the sight but shoved it aside. Naruto just sighed and rose a eyebrow, if it is I who is late then were his sensei. Naruto replied coolly, stop trying to act cool baka. She practically screeched, Naruto sighed before staring into the field they were in. It was an open space with trees all around with a lake nearby. Naruto had trained here on his own before, once it was sealed off and secure no one would see. Just then Kakashi appeared yo. He said while giving a two-fingered salute and a eye smile. They are late sensei. The Kashi continued his eye smile and scratched the back of his head. Well you see there was an elderly woman who needed my help and I called no. He was cut off prematurely by Naruto. Not help her. He said with a smirk. The Kashi just eye smiled and spoke in a mock pride voice with a nime tears flowing from his closed eye. Finally someone who understands my genius. Coughing loudly Kakashi just got back into sensei mode, or Kakashi's version of it. He took out alarm clock and placed it on top of one of the stumps behind the genin. You have until noon to get these two bells from me he spoke while tying two bells to his waist. But sensei there are only two bells there and there is three of us what does that mean? Sakura pointed out. Akashus if possible I smile grew. How very perceptive of you Sakura. Yes there are two bells. And the reason behind this is simple. Only two of you will pass. While the other will be sent back to the academy. Now remember to come at me with the attempt to kill and you'll be fine. Kakashi finished with a serious look. But sensei won't you get hurt. Sakura said clearly worried she would hurt her sensei. As if. Naruto snorted at that. Ha. Huh. Like you could even hit Kakashi sensei, as I said Hess the third strongest ninja in the village, excluding Jiraiya and Tsunade, that comment caused Sakura to get a tick mark on her forehead, what did you say Baka? She finished the last part with a shout, sigh never mind, you just wait and see. Kakashi was watching Naruto wearily now, this is the side of him he saw when talking about him yesterday, the serious eyed, now Kakashi didn't know if he had multi-personalities or something, but he was interested in which one was the real Naruto, he had a feeling that he would find out soon. HN, like you could do any better than Sakura Dobe, I bet she passes, and you don't Sasuke finished with a smirk trying to agitate Naruto, much to his surprise and annoyance, Naruto was grinning back and said, I bet I get a bell before you team. Sasuke stoked to think for a while before getting a full-blown grin, fine then winner gets to be team leader, as soon as Sasuke said that Naruto was in front of him shaking to make it official, they turned to see a eye smiling Kakashi, okay now that, that sorted, Hajin. As soon as he said that Sakura and Sasuke disappeared into the forest, leaving a bored looking Kakashi and a grinning Naruto, okay Naruto, you are either extremely powerful or a compel idiot. I think I like option A better, Naruto disappeared and was now behind Kakashi what do you think? By the way Naruto is 160 centimeters 1, 6 meters tall and 70 kilograms heavy muscle. Kakashi's eye widened at how fast Naruto got there and decided to be more careful and more aware of his surroundings. Kakashi turned around only to see no one there, he turned back to see a still smiling Naruto in the place he was before, ready Kakashi sensei. Suddenly Kakashi felt himself flying backwards and an unbearable pain in his chest. When he looked at the place he was before he saw Naruto there with one palm extended, shit what is this kid? 
was Kakash's thoughts. Bakashi quickly adjusted himself in mid-air landing on the ground with a slight skid. Looks like I need to go all out. Sai Kakashi moved his headband to reveal a red eye spinning madly at Naruto. But Sasuke. Sasuke was gaping at Naruto's speed and strength. Was he always this strong and holding back? Naruto said it himself. Kakashi is the third strongest ninja in Konoha. Sasuke knew this was true. By reading the bingo book and seeing Kakashi there, he had also had a look at the golden storm and was amazed. This guy was one of the strongest ninja alive and was quite clearly strongest in Konoha. The picture of him though was weird, as in the picture was a boy who wore anbu clothes with a golden mask covering his face. Sasuke caught Kakashi move towards his headband as he saw him remove it to reveal the Sharingan eye. Of course Sasuke knew Kakashi had that eye. He had read through the events of how Kakashi had obtained the eye in the Ichiha files, but for Naruto to make him do that, just who are you Naruto? Back with the fight, Bakashi and Naruto charged at each other, quickly engaging one another in a tojutsu match. Naruto kicked Kakashi's leg effectively making him lose balance. Naruto then punched him square in the chest, making him skid a few feet back. Naruto charged at him. Only Kakashi's own skill and Sharingan were able to follow Naruto's speed. He was definitely faster than Guy. Thinking of Guy was when Kakashi immediately recognized the tojutsu style he was was using. It was one that Guy had tried to learn and had Kakashi help but no no avail, as his body was too rigid and stern. No way near flexible enough to use the style, the style was called Muay Thai. The two continued furiously in there to just to spar. Kakashi swung a right hook towards Naruto's temple, who quickly responded by leaning back. This caused Kakashi to slightly lean forward, but it was all he needed. Quickly Naruto had brought up his right knee up and made connection with Kakashi's chest, effectively sending him flying into the air. The witch Naruto quickly jumped up and gave the axe kick to his back, only to have shattered a log. Kakashi was now panting while standing behind a tree, panting tremendously. That kid was was unreal. He had only been fighting for like hard. Guess that was his clone with Sakura he was only fighting for 20 minutes and he was exhausted, it was unreal. Bakashi quickly ducked under a punch that shattered the tree trunk where his head was and jumped away. He was quickly followed by Naruto, who charged at him at insane speeds and started to engage in another tojutsu fight. Naruto jabbed Kakashi in his ribs, which made him wince in pain. Kakashi recovered quickly and sent a punch to Naruto's temple, which was batted aside by Naruto. Kakashi knew he cold compared to him in tojutsu, so he jumped back and started to do some hand seals. Suiten. Sir Yuiten no jutsu. Water style. Water Dragon Jutsu. Naruto cursed as he saw the Water Dragon explode from the lake and did a forehand seal sequence which finished on Dog Doten. Doryu Heki. Earth Release. Mud Wall, creating a giant earth wall in front of him, the dragon crashed into the earth wall, which didn't budge until the dragon stopped, then it crumbled. Bakashi was surprised that Naruto was able to counter his Jutsu, so he decided to take it up a level. Suiten. Suicho Sha. Water Style. Water shock wave. When he shouted that he jumped on the lake as a wave formed and started heading towards Naruto at extreme speeds, Naruto cursed for having to do this, but the situation needed it. Kakashi was testing Naruto, and he knew it. Behind him was Sakura and Sasuke, and if he moved or didn't stop it, they could get seriously injured or even killed. He cursed under his breath for having to do this. Hyoten. Freezing fog. He took a deep breath before pressing his index and thumb together, creating a O shape and bringing it up to his mouth, where he breathed out a fast-moving fog which spread across in front of him. As soon as the wave made impact with the fog it instantly froze how it was, Kakashi upon seeing that jumped off of his wave just in time to see a 30-foot frozen wave, Naruto can use Hyoten. I thought that only the clan and Kiri can do that, is Naruto related to them? Deciding to ask him later Kakashi escaped from Naruto while he was looking at the wave with Sasuke. Sasuke was now with wide eyes, not only was Naruto the dead last. Able to beat Kakashi one of the strongest ninja in Konoha in Tojutsu, he was also able to beat him in ninjutsu, and that was Kakashi's strong point. He cursed to himself, he had been an idiot, just because he was in Achiha it didn't mean anything. The same way it didn't mean anything if you were a jonin fighting a genin, doesn't mean the jonin will always win just because of ranks. He swallowed his pride for the last time, from this day on he will not demand respect or power. He would be like Naruto and earn it. This battle was an eye-opener of how far from his goal he was, but hopefully with friends like Naruto, he could be able to achieve it much faster. The SSST, Sasuke. He heard a whisper from behind him and turned to see Naruto there kneeling next to him, Sasuke raised an eyebrow and wondering what he wanted, he was doing fine before. Sasuke I'm going to need your help, now this had his interest, why did he need him? He was winning against Kakashi. Why do you need my help Naruto? 
you can get a bell on your own the lack of dope made Naruto's own Abro shoot up, but decided it may have been from his skill that he showed. The aim isn't to get a bell, the aim is teamwork, to show that you are willing to take one for the team and help them out. Kanoha was built on the foundation of teamwork and is its most important aspect, Kakashi Sensei believes in it the most. You obviously know how he got that eye. But if it's the bells you worried about, he drifted off when he held up two silvery bells. Sasuke's eyes widened, he already had both bells. Damn. He lost the bet. However even if he did win, Naruto would have still been team leader second to Kakashi of course, now with determination in his eyes Sasuke nodded and they headed off to find Sakura. It didn't take long to find her, as she was in the middle of a field laying unconscious, when they tried waking her up it was no use, suddenly Naruto got an idea and whispered it into Sasuke's ear, who went wide-eyed, no. No, no 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 no. He screamed out, however Naruto just nodded yes 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 yes, yes. Sasuke turned to Naruto and told him, why don't you do it? Naruto turned to him and smiled softly, I'm married, and I can't this caused Sasuke to raise an eyebrow at him, saying really? Who do you think I am? Naruto just sighed and clapped his hands together, while saying Kai revealing his ring on his finger, Sasuke just stared at him trying to calculate who his friend was married to, but before he could ask he could hear a groan next to him, Naruto quickly recast the Jinjutsu on his ring. He turned to see Sakura waking up, he just smirked at Naruto, ha. Huh. I don't have to kiss her. He quickly covered his mouth wondering if she heard him, luckily it seems she didn't. Sakura opened her eyes to see Naruto and Sasuke staring at her, then her memories came back, Sasuke-kun are you okay? Did Kakashi-sensei hurt you? Why is the Baka here? What are you doing here? She almost started hyperventilating, before taking long deep breaths, Naruto and Sasuke just sweat dropped, before Naruto started talking, okay Sakura listen to pass the test we need to work together, we need a plan, and it has to be good, I got it. Sakura just blinked and then got a tick mark before shouting, Baka. Who said you are in charge? I bet Sasuke-kun has a plan and it's better than yours. Sasuke sighed before speaking up voicing his annoyance, Sakura, shut up. Listen to Naruto Hess the strongest here, I think Hess even stronger than Kakashi-sensei, Naruto what's this plan of yours? Naruto just smiled before nodding to Sasuke his thanks. Sakura just blinked, Naruto was the strongest. No way was that correct. He was the dope of the year the dead last. Yet Sasuke just praised him, what happened, at this time she decided she would go along with the plan, well since Sasuke said he was so strong then it had to be right. Naruto quickly whispered the plan into the other two's ears before they all nodded and got into positions with Kakashi. The Kakashi was worried, his new fresh out of the academy, wet behind the ears Genin was running loops around him, he was the dead last of his class for God's sake. Yet he was beating Kakashi into Jutsu, and even going so far as to battle him in Ninjutsu, Kakashi's forte, it was unbelievable, just who was this kid? He had been Naruto's guard when he was a newborn up until his fifth birthday, he knew it wasn't the kid's fault that he contained the demon within, yet at first he called help but to hate him, however that changed after the first week of looking after him, he was just a little kid, a baby who was born at the wrong time, apparently no one knew who his parents were, or they won't tell him, he sighed, the kid had a hard life, he was bought out of his thoughts by the sound of whistling, instincts kicking and Kakashi jumped back just as four kunai created a square around him, before he could even think of anything he saw Sasuke jump out of the bush, while well, finishing his hand seals Katen. Kakaku no Jutsu. Higher style. Grand Fireball Jutsu, before Kakashi could Kawarimi away the kunai exploded in a burst of smoke, and four Naruto's now jumped at him, he was now bound, and no way to go with a giant fireball coming his was. He then realized something was off, and he opened his Sharingan eye, he closed his eyelid to conserve chakra, realization hit him, and he said Kai and opened his eye to see his three genin smiling at him, he quickly went to his waist and smiled when he felt his two bells still there, it would be so fun to see if they would understand the true meaning to the test, well it seems that you have failed, that's a disappointment as I hope thought Kakashi was cut short as he saw Naruto holding up two bells in his hands, Kakashi was standing there mouth agape, only hidden by his face mask, he quickly reached down to grab his bells, only feel smoke where they were, he eye smiled and chuckled, well then Naruto who shall pass with you? At this Naruto smirked and responded by crushing the bells in his hand, Kakashi instantly got the message and smiled under his mask, while Naruto spoke both, both of them helped me to defeat you, and both were part of the plan, Kakashi I smiled and said well then I guess there is no two ways about it then, you all pass. Congratulations, meet me here tomorrow at 7am. Jana. And with that he disappeared in a burst of smoke. Sasuke turned to Naruto obviously confused about something, Naruto I still don't get one thing though, you already had the bells when you came to me why did you need us? 
This made Sakura's eyes widen, she had only seen Naruto use his shadow clone and henge, and that was all, but the way Sasuke had said it, it sounded like Naruto had beaten Kakashi. Naruto sighed, think of it like this, the mission was to get the bells, but the objective was teamwork, realization hit Sasuke's face as he smirked he was about to say something, but Naruto cut him off, I'm sorry Sasuke another time, but if you could explain to Sakura about the 30 foot frozen wave behind you, it will be much appreciated, thanks I owe you one. Naruto shouted the last bit out while running off, Sasuke just shook his head and turned to Sakura who was stunned, well you see, Hokage's office. Standing in front of the Hokage was eight of the nine Jonin senseis for the current batch of newly graduates, they were waiting for one more to arrive, poof, and there he was Kakashi now they could get the meeting underway. Ah Kakashi so nice of you to join us spoke the Hokage in a calm voice, Kakashi for his part just chuckled and scratched the back of his head before getting serious, team's report below the sand aim. The Hokage nodded already expecting this and waved the other Jonin to leave, leaving only Kakashi Asuma and Kurenai standing in front of him, he motioned them to start and let them speak. Kurenai was the first to speak, I Kurenai Yuhi, past team A consisting of Hayuga Hinata, Kiba Izunka and Zaburam Shino as genin of Kanahagakur no Sato, they showed great potential in their teamwork which complemented each other's own, Hayuga Hinata is the eyes of the team, and she shows great potential to flourish as a ninja, her Tejutsu is a standard low chunin, thanks to her family's style. However, However she does not use it properly as she lacks confidence, as for other abilities I did not see, and Zunka Kiba is the nose of the group, he and his partner Akimaru have great teamwork which he was able to use in conjunction with his teammates, he has great use of Tainan Jutsu, and I would give his Tejutsu a low chunin, as well as it was the only form he used against me, finally, Aburam Shino is the brains of the group, as it was him who devised the plan to take me out, he did not personally engage me in a fight, so I am unaware of his current level, overall I would rate them all to be about standard genin at this time. Full details are in the report she finished with a small bow of the head, and the Hokage nodded in his acceptance. Asuma was next to talk I Asuma Suratobi, past Team 10, consisting of Nara Shikamaru, Akamichi Choji and Yamanka Ino as genin of Kanahagakur no Sato. They have shown great teamwork and already used basic Ino Shikacho strategies. Nara Shikamaru was the brains, effectively creating a plan to capture me. He does however, have low chakra reserves which need to be worked on. Akamichi Choji is the muscle of the group as he presents the most brute strength. He does have decent size chakra coils however he also has low stamina, due to the need for weight for clan Jutsus, Yamanka Ino, to tell the truth surprised me, I first expected her to be useless in the battlefield, however she proved me wrong when she fought me in a decent Tejutsu match, however she still holds some fangirl tendencies which need to be broken, overall I would rate Shikamaru to be a low chunin, due to his strategical mind and quick thinking, Choji at mid genin and Ino at low genin, full details on mission report, he finished with a bow of the head as well, he was glad things had gotten better with his dad. After he returned from the 12 Gordians him and his dad were on strained relations, but after a while it all cooled down and he is able to see eye to eye with his father. Finally it was Kakashi's turn I Kakashi Haddock, past Team 7 consisting of Ichiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura and Yuzumaki Naruto as genin of Kanahagakur no Sato. Naruto was able to see the true meaning of the bell test, and after engaging me in a Tejutsu and Ninjutsu match and defeating me, Kakashi was cut short when Asuma snorted and spoke HN. So you mean to tell me that the dead last of the academy beat you Kakashi in a Ninjutsu match? He started chuckling oblivious to Kurenai glaring at him from behind. Kakashi continued, even though a small match where I fired two powerful jutsu at him and he countered them, he still beamed me even using Hyoten which I was unaware he could use, he sent a look at the Hokage, who kept a straight face. After making me retreat he was able to convince Sasuke and Sakura to work with him, where they were able to obtain two bells, where Naruto proceeded to crush them and said they all pass. He took a deep breath before continuing. I did not get a clear view of their skill except Naruto, but I can only make a guess on how much he was showing, I would rate Naruto at high Jonin, no doubt about that, he is possibly stronger than me, Sasuke would rate low Chunin, and Sakura would be low Jenin, the rest of the events are in the report, he finished with a respectful bow of the head as well, the Hokage nodded now a smirk on his face, he had already anticipated that this would have happened, oh how he cold wait to see their faces when they found out, of course Kurenai knew already, which led him onto his next thought he could see his son looking at Kurenai, he had been in love with Kurenai since they first met, unfortunately at that time Kurenai had already been taken and was married with Naruto, he felt a pang of sadness for his son, but he knew it wasn't meant to be, he turned to Kurenai before speaking, Kurenai I have spoken to Naruto in the morning, and he said he believes it is okay, and you may go ahead with it at hearing this Kurenai's face lit up, finally she could call herself Kurenai Uzumaki Namikaze, although not Namikaze yet, but soon though, she nodded, while the Hokage smiled, Kurenai Yuhi, by the powers given to me as the Sandaim Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sato, I hereby change your name to that of your partners, to Kurenai Uzumaki. Congratulations.
he spoke with a smile, while the other two males in the room just froze. Gurunai Yuhi, by the powers given to me as the Sandam Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sato, I hereby change your name to that of your partners, to Kurunai Uzumaki. Congratulations. He spoke with a smile, while the other two males in the room just froze. Gurunai was smiling while holding her chest and looking outside the window, she was now officially married to Naruto, sure they had already been married, the Hokage was the one to marry them together, but they weren't officially married in the eyes of the law, Naruto however strong he was at the time, was still 10 years old. Also at that time the Hokage wanted to keep Naruto's prowess and strength a secret wanting him only to take the occasional mission now and then mainly consisting of A and S ranks, she had wanted to finally let the world know who she was together with, and she didn't care what they thought. Bakashi was now looking at Kurunai, eyes wide and mouth agape, he didn't know what to say, he was stunned, after all his years of being a shinobi and a anbu, he would have thought that he would be able to hide any shock, but this, this was one thing he would never have been prepared for, he looked at the slightly distant look in Kurunai's eyes, it was obvious that she was happy, he wondered if she was the reason Naruto was so strong, Kurunai, at the moment was the strongest Kanoichi in the village, excluding Tsunade who wasn't in the village at the moment, so it would be understandable if it was her who trained him to such a level, slam, the third Hokage winced at the sound of the door slamming, he sighed, Asuma was taking this bad, he had a crush on Kurunai since he first met her, that slowly evolved into deeper feelings as he got to know her more, he knew all of this, just by observing his son, it was painfully obvious to anybody, he knew that Kurunai was trying so hard not to break his feelings, but by postponing it for so long she had made it all the more painful for him, he sighed again looking across to a still shocked Kakashi, and a frowning Kurunai who was looking at the door, Kurunai was frowning, she noticed Asuma's shocked face, then saw the look of rage and anger on his face, she didn't want for this to happen, she would have told him in her own time, but the Hokage had other ideas, she felt as if this was a sort of punishment for not telling him she was not interested earlier, he had taken her out a few times in the past, she had gotten the okay from Naruto to keep up appearances, Asuma had taken her out to some of the more upper end of Konoha, and the more finer restaurants, she had hoped that he would have saw them as more friendly night outs, like a meal after missions and the cinema after a day of training with the rest of the jonin, but it seems she was wrong, she sighed while looking at the floor hopping Asuma won't do anything stupid, but Asuma, Asuma was angry, no scrap that he was pissed, the girl of his dreams, the one had been in love with for well over two years now, was married, she was married, and by the way his father had said it she had been married for quite some time now, he wondered how long she had been married, he was seething in anger, he had taken her out on some dates in the past, he wondered if that was before or after she was married, he needed to prove to her he was the one for her, the man of her dreams, that bought him onto his next train of thoughts, Yuzumaki Naruto, he was the one, there are no other Yuzumakis in Konoha, so he had to be the one, the one who stole away his woman, the one who stole his dreams for the future, he was married to Kurunai, and Asuma didn't like it, Asuma was currently walking through the main street, ignoring his surroundings, and honestly not caring about them, at this time there was only one thing on his mind, find Naruto and make him pay, but where could he be? Naruto was well known for stepping off the radar and sometimes for months, he would just simply disappear and not be seen or heard of in weeks or months, he began to think where Naruto normally hanged out, he frowned, he didn't know where Naruto hanged out at all, hell he didn't know much about the boy at all, he began to calm down and feel his anger draining, maybe he was being stupid. He kept on thinking about his Kurunai when she wasn't his at all. He was about to head home when he saw a golden mop of spiky hair walking down the road with Naruto. Naruto was having a great time, why you may ask. Well he knew that roughly around now his wife would officially become that, his wife, it felt great, knowing that now not even the law could stop them being together, not that anything could it just felt much better, right now he was currently eating Raymond at Ichirikus, and on the house Mizo Raymond courtesy of AM, he was talking to her about his test and how he totally kicked his sensei's ass, so then I went like PCHA, and hi, and ra, and he totally lost I even used a super cool jutsu to do it as well. He shouted enthusiastically while striking poses on his seat, making AM giggle at him, no matter how much he changed he would always have this side of him, it was genetics, apparently his father was exactly the same, he could be a dead serious killing machine one minute, and a big softy the next to Sandame said he was like his mother in that sense, he continued telling his story, he sighing, he knew something bad was about to happen, he could feel it, Naruto paid for his raiment and started to walk away, he could feel someone was watching him, so decided the best way to go about this was to draw out the person by going to open space away from prying eyes, so he decided to go to one of the training fields, training field 32, it was an open space that had a thick forest around the edges with some rocky terrains around, all in all a perfect training area, you can come out now, I know you're there. Naruto shouted aloud to what seemed like nothing, not a second after he finished Asuma blurred out of the trees, and he appeared to be gritting his teeth at him, Naruto still a bit confused to what he wanted, decided to go back to a slight idiotic manner, oh. Asuma-sensei. What's up?
Asuma snarled, who did this kid think he was fooling? Maybe before he had heard Kakashi's report he would have been naive enough to believe it, maybe before he found out that he was married to Kurinai, he would have let it slide, but not anymore, this kid was trying to play idiot, and he didn't like it, you can stop playing the fool and act properly, I know you can you little shit, you've been playing us all for idiot, and I think it's time you stopped. Asuma spoke in his gruff voice while gritting his teeth. Naruto's smile disappeared altogether, now in its place a serious expression showing he was ready for anything, oh and pray, tell what you mean. Naruto shot back now smirking again, this made Asuma grit his teeth in annoyance, he won't stand for this insolence, you took her away from me. He nearly shouted, and it would have been one, was his voice not so deep, now realization came to Naruto's face, and he rose a eyebrow, of course this is why he was here, he secretly didn't blame him, if he had lost Kurinai, he would have hit the person responsible, and in this case it was him, he sighed before speaking, oh, and how did I take her away from you? Trying to keep the situation as calm as possible he spoke in a calm and cool voice. This just served to anger Asuma even more. How? How? What do you mean how? I've been taking Kurinai out for almost four months now. And suddenly she's married to you? How did you do it? Is it some kind of mind control? Asila maybe? Or are you that much of a sneaky bastard? He was done being calm, who did this brat think he was anyway? He thought he could just waltz in and steal his, well soon to be girlfriend, no, he had another thing coming if he thought that he would just let him get away with it, Naruto was finding it hard to keep his anger in check, he was accusing him of stealing Kurinai from him, by force no less, he grit his teeth, he was talking about his wife and Naruto didn't like it, what do to mean taking Kurinai for 4 months? You make it sound like you two were some thing together. Have you held hands? Taken her out for an official date? Kissed? Slept together? All you did was take her out for a few congratulatory meals and see some half-assed romance films, you even took her to the ones she didn't like. And you have the nerve to tell me I'm a sneaky bastard. Get out of my face before I do something I regret how dare he. Now that he had got that out of his system, he turned to see Asuma standing there with his fists clenched and his jaw clamped shut whilst gritting his teeth. If Asuma was pissed before, now he was furious, he was standing there, telling him that what he had done with Kurinai was nothing but friendly outings, maybe to another person, but to him, and, probably, Kurinai they were like dates, right? Of course they were the little shit had no idea what he was talking about, once he heard the threat that did it, that went one too far for him, you bastard. Who do you think you are? Threatening me like that. A demon like you doesn't deserve her angel like Kurinai. He finished with a growl that would show the little brat not to mess with him, now he had no ill will towards Naruto regarding the Kaiubi, but he hit a sore spot for the kid and he knew it would get the wanted results if the kid attacked him, then he would subdue him and beat him to a pulp that would show the little shit. Naruto looked at the floor while gritting his teeth so hard they were beginning to go numb under the pressure, his fists were bowled up so tight that his slightly elongated nails were digging into his hands, effectively drawing blood, he spoke whilst looking down, his bangs covering his face, his voice was low and dark, is that what you think? He paused for a moment, hearing no response he continued, is that what you honestly think? You bastard. How dare you. Suddenly he exploded and golden chakra covered his body, taking the shape of a golden fox with a tail swishing around behind him, he'll kill you. Asuma stood in fear, the killing intent leaking from Naruto could make anyone's heart stop, it was just unreal. He was choking barely standing, it took him a few moments of deep breaths before H regained his cool and reached for his trench knives, having them in his hands made him feel safer, he looked at Naruto's eyes, shocked to see red eyes with black slits in them glaring at him back, before he could move Naruto disappeared, with Kurinai, Kurinai was now walking away from the Hokage's office, she was thinking of how things would change now, now that people would know that she was with Naruto they would no doubt change the way they acted around her, it was almost guaranteed, however she didn't care, all that cared to her was Naruto, she would go to hell and back a thousand times for him, and she was sure he would do the same, they both loved each other to no end, and she wanted to spend the rest of her life with him no matter what, she sighed, she was going to get her ass chewed from her friends, one normally doesn't keep secrets like this from her best friends, especially for over seven years, but what could she have done, she was under direct orders from the Hokage to keep it secret, and Naruto on top of that, even though she was dreading it, another part of her cold weight, oh the looks on their faces, it would be well worth it, she got a sparkle in her eye, before shaking it off, she had been around Naruto for too long, even though he could be the most mature man one second, he could be a childish little brat the next, and that is what she loved, his personality was what made her love him that extra mile at the start, now she loved him no matter what he would be like, he was a deadly killer one moment and a little kid asking her to make him some food, he had Elway, she froze when she felt her ring heat up, she looked at it only to see the Hiroshima seal burning, she instantly knew what that meant, Naruto was using Kyubi chakra, uncontrollably, and if she didn't stop him soon the whole village would feel his killing intent, she activated the seal disappearing in a golden flash. Back with Naruto. I am going to kill you. 
Naruto roared with all his might suddenly disappearing and reaping in front of Asuma, with a fist cocked back, Asuma could only blink as his face was smashed by a burning golden hand, he was knocked a hundred meters back, but before he could stop he was hit from behind on his back, effectively knocking him back to where he started, he collapsed on the ground, slowly he got up on one knee and saw Naruto, with an arm outstretched holding a golden ball of chakra in his hand, the sight was amazing, it was like the Yandame's Rasengan only supercharged, before anything could happen there was a golden flash, Gurunai appeared in front of Naruto and slammed a seal on his forehead, knocking him out and deactivating his jutsu. Before he could hit the ground she caught him and held him close to her chest. She sighed when she saw he was alright, she was so worried, not knowing what she should have done, she decided he would be too hard to deal with right now. So she would suppress his chakra with the seals he created. She looked down at his unconscious form and kissed his forehead, under his hit I ate. She looked around to see a panting and kneeling Asuma looking at her in shock. Suddenly everything clicked in place. He had caused him to go berserk like that. It was his big weakness. He had small self-control when it came to those he cared about. She narrowed her eyes and growled at him. What did you do to him? When Asuma saw her gaze he flinched. He never knew how much she actually cared for him. He had never seen them together. But just looking at her, even with him unconscious, he could tell she was deeply in love with him. Just by watching Kurinai hold him and kiss him, he could tell. Ay 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 I just said some things he finished with a sigh. He got to his feet but winced under the pain. Damn that kid hit hard. Before he could do anything else he flew backwards. Feeling his jaw dislocated. He looked up to see Kurinai with her arm outstretched where his jaw was. Damn. Now he had no chance whatsoever, maybe he should have just accepted it, she was with another man, boy and she was quite clearly happy, who was he to break that apart? He looked down and spoke to him so he found it hard to speak as his jaw was barely connected to his skull. She looked at him before sighing as well, you better be, but not to me, to Naruto he looked down at that, he had said some pretty hurtful things, especially the demon part, that must have hurt the kid, to know that you carried something like that to your grave, he couldn't imagine it, just be happy I made it in time, if I was just a few seconds late, she let it hang, he knew what she meant, he would have been dead, no question about that, it wasn't because he was weak, oh no far from it, it was the first hit, it was unexpected, completely, it was all an opponent needed, that first opening, and it was over. Kurinai sighed and looked at Naruto who was still unconscious, she walked up to him and picked him up, she carried him bridal style, like she used to when he was smaller and fell asleep on the couch, she took one last look at the panting Asuma, who was rubbing his jaw, and sighed before setting off. The next morning Naruto's house. Naruto groaned as he slowly opened his eyes, the light from the window penetrated his iris, he suddenly got his memory from yesterday and frowned, he hoped he didn't beat Asuma too bad, he was just so angry, however he wouldn't hold him against him, this time, he had unconsciously tapped into Kaiuba's chakra, and that meant he wasn't in control, he had yet to fully control Kaiuba, so that meant the chakra could still still affect him if tapped into one in a fit of rage, he began to chuckle a bit, if he had removed his seals, then it would have been game over, he sighed and looked at the time it was 8 o'clock, he had roughly 1 hour 30 minutes till Kakashi showed up, he noticed a note under his alarm clock, he picked it up and read it, Naruto-kun, you should be more careful with your emotions, I'm sorry I'm not there right now, but I got team training at, I'll talk to you tomorrow, I won't be home tonight, girls night out today, love you lots, Kurinai XXX, he smiled at the note before getting up and getting dressed, he wore the same style of clothes as yesterday, this time putting his headband on his right arm, he went and did his morning necessities and went to get breakfast, once finished he set off, making sure he locked the door behind him, training ground 7, Naruto arrived at training ground 7 to see a bored looking Sasuke, leaning against a tree, and a pacing Sakura who kept on walking in a circle, he arrived in a poof of smoke, yo he spoke, and did a two finger salute like Kakashi, can't help it, it's one of my own habits lol, Sasuke looked up at him and grunted, before looking away again, while Sakura was red in the face, you baka, where have you been, you're late, she screamed at him, her head becoming several sizes bigger, he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly while looking embarrassed, I uh, I kinda slept and he finished with a shrug, Sakura was fuming, while Sasuke was thinking about Naruto, how did he get so strong, what made him drive to achieve that strength, but the biggest question so far was, why? Why hide his strength for so long? If it was him in Naruto's shoes, he would have graduated already and progressed through the shinobi ranks, fast, however his train of thoughts was cut off with the sound of poof and a, yo curtsy of Kakashi. Sasuke looked at Naruto, only to see him nod in his direction, he looked at the rest of his team smirked, maybe this team thing wasn't so bad after all, 
if he could get help from both Kakashi and Naruto, he could achieve his dream much faster than he ever thought, that however brought him to the realization he made yesterday. Itachi was light years ahead of him, Itachi was ranked at S-class caliber and was ranked higher than Kakashi in strength when he was in Konoha. This just showed how weak he was, he was furious at first, even going as far as to almost go to the Hokage and demand for training. However, with some careful consideration and thought, he decided it would be best not to go back into his arrogant tendencies. He had been spoiled since the age of seven, since after after that night, they would give him everything he wanted and it got to his head, only when he reached 10, did he realize that this would only make him weaker, as it did no one any good to be a arrogant prick, it was at that time that he decided to start working twice as hard, to make up for his past 3 years of being spoiled, it was that decision that made him how strong he was now, strong he was yes, but not strong enough, the cash he looked at Naruto and wondered how he was married to Karenia, but decided to ask another time, mentally filing away the questions for later, the cash he already decided it would be best for his team to do some training training for today and to get used to one another and the team, he was pretty sure that Sasuke would be able to do any normal C-rank mission thrown his way, and he was certain Naruto could even solo some A-ranks, even do S-ranked missions with the right circumstances and team, but that wasn't the problem, no the problem was Sakura, she was the weakest of the team by a mile and a half, like the saying goes, your chain is only as strong as the weakest link, so to make the team solid they would have to train, and that was what brought him to his next conclusion, they would not do any D-ranked missions if his plan went accordingly, he would have them train to together for a month, building up their teamwork and strength, then if he deemed them fit, he would take them on a C-rank and then start from there, if they really showed flair and potential, he would enter them into the Chunin exams in 6 months time, right my cute little Jennings, we won't be doing any missions today, this earned them to look at him a bit confused, in fact we won't be taking any missions for a month, this earned him even greater looks of confusion, oh how he loved this job now, I will be training you for the month, and if I deem you ready we will go on a proper mission. He said the last part with a eye smile, Sakura the most confused of the three, well too, decided to voice her confusion, what do you mean proper missions Kakashi sensei? Aren't all missions proper? This time Naruto decided to chirp in my own comment, yes and no, you see missions are ranked by difficulty, they range from S to D, and are like this, when deciding who takes what mission, D ranks, which is technically a mission but not seen as one by many, is more of a chore around the village, they are used to build up teamwork within a team, and are generally handed out to us rookie genins, C ranks, which are more of bandit hunts and escort type missions, are handed to more seasoned genins and chunins depending of the difficulty, B ranks, which can range to just about anything from assassinations to higher level escort missions, are generally left for higher level chunins and low jonin, a ranks are where they get a bit more complicated, since during the mission just about anything could happen, these are left for higher level jonins, and A and S rank nins, now we have S ranks, these are the hardest and very confidential, in fact I have no idea what they consist of, these are left for teams of A rank nins or S ranked, well, that is from what I've heard he spoke the last part sheepishly, Sakura and Sasuke blinked, before both filing away the information that they were given, it would prove useful when considering missions in the future, Sasuke then looked at Naruto, how do you know so much about missions? Naruto started rubbing the back of Hess' head while chuckling nervously, um I kinda asked Jiji if he could tell me when we was in the academy, you know with me almost being a ninja, and all Sasuke looked at him for a few more seconds before nodding and accepted the answer, the Kashi eye smiled at them, this team could, no will be one of the best Konoha has ever seen, right my little genins, let's start with a warm up. I want you all to do 100 laps around the training field. Now what's so bad about that you may think? A ninja should be able to run around a few miles right. Well considering the training field was 5 miles around, they would effectively be doing 500 miles, they would be however Kakashi wanted to see how much stamina they had, he was sure that Naruto had well over enough to complete the laps, and was sure Sasu could at least do 30 laps, but it was Sakura he was most interested in seeing, he wanted to get a feel for her reserves and what he would have to work with, now before you all start moaning, you don't have to do all 100, just until you run out of chakra, this way I can see your chakra reserves, and what level they are, all three nodded their head in understanding, and set off. Seven hour later, it was seven hours since he set them off on their little run around the training ground, Sakura had managed five laps around, which all in all was pathetic, considering that she was supposed to be a ninja and run for days on end, Sasuke had done a lot better, managing 43 laps around before he collapsed, and by no surprise Naruto had completed the whole 100 laps, with only slightly breaking a sweat and panting lightly, that was three hours ago, since then he had them start on chakra control, 
He had them do tree walking, well he would have if Naruto and Sasuke didn't know it already, so instead Sakura had to do tree walking, well Kakashi taught them water walking, and surprise, surprise Naruto knew it already, however Sasuke did not, and he enjoyed the pissed look on his face by being one-upped, so while the other two did their tasks, he and Naruto started sparing. He made sure not to tell him to come with the intent to kill this time, last time he almost did, so that brings us up to present with Sakura now almost unconscious from chakra exhaustion and bruises around her body, and a soaking wet exhausted Sasuke, while Naruto was laying on the ground, panting from exhaustion, but the very tired Kakashi next to him, they decided that they should call it a wrap for today, and should meet at the same time tomorrow, to which Kakashi explained that he would be on time and take their training more serious. Gradually they all went their separate ways, except Naruto who was still laying on the floor with his eyes closed, when he opened them, they were red with a black slit in the middle. He just laid there for 10 minutes, feeling the chakra and energy return to his body. Basically he uses a bit of the Kaibas chakra to replenish his chakra pools, but only a tiny bit so it took longer than if he was to burst them out, with a sigh he got up and started to get a sense around, until he felt the chakra signature that he was looking for, and headed that way, with Kurinai. Kurinai and her team were doing some light afternoon training, they had done their first D-rank mission today, but only one, so to get used to working together by slowly integrating together, Kurinai for her part was frowning, she was first of all worried about her meeting with her friends, and secondly, she was upset she couldn't see Naruto till tomorrow, or so she thought. Hey there beautiful she heard a whisper behind her, she immediately realized who it was and spun around and crashed her lips on his, Naruto was a little surprised by the action, but returned the act. Hiba for his part had just finished his five laps around the training field, and was about to go and ask his sensei, what should he do next, he was expecting to see his sensei there looking at the rest of his team, what he didn't expect was Hinata to be sparring Shino, while his sensei was making out with some guy, he could only see the person's arms, since Kurinai was blocking his view, he creeped over to see who it was, consequences be damned, he wanted to know who the lucky bastard who managed to woo his sensei was, you know what they say, curiosity killed the cat, well he wanted that cat dead anyway, he froze when he reached them, he saw gold and yellow and whiskers before he realized who it was, Naruto. How the hell was this happening? The Dobe had gotten one of the most beautiful and chazzed women in Kanoha. They immediately broke apart after they heard Kiba call Naruto. Kurinai for her part was blushing a very deep shade of red. Whilst inwardly cursing that he caught them, Naruto on the other hand, was scratching the back of his head and grinning, Oh hey Kiba, didn't see you there. Kiba was furious. How? How had he done it? He should have been the one to get such a beautiful woman. He was the alpha after all, not some dead last loser. Naruto what are you doing? This time he shouted out loud to make sure the other two heard him. Upon hearing Kiba's shout, Shino and Hinata stopped their spar and rushed over to where Kiba was, only to find a red Kurinai and a sheepish Naruto. Hinata called and tell what was going on, why was her crush with their sensei? Did he come to see them? Or was there something else? Dread washed over her, what if Naruto was with Kurinai? Kurinai had been her guardian for two years now, helping her train and look after her. She knew of Hinata's feelings regarding Naruto. It was one of the reasons she was on Kurinai's team. After knowing the woman for so long they worked perfectly together. Shino however just blinked, while taking the information in and storing it for later, also waiting for a response from Naruto. Naruto was now cursing. Both Hinata and Shino were there. Kurinai was meant to have a talk with Hinata explaining to her what was going on. He knew she had a crush on him. Any half-decent normal person would. Kurinai being her guardian, verified that, he was sure that he would have at least tried to return those feelings, was he not already married in love with someone else, this complicated things a lot, he spared a glance at Kurinai, who sighed and nodded, he gave her a sympathetic look, it would be her who had to clean this mess up, he looked back at the other three, one red angry Kiba, one cool and calm Shino, and a pink faced Tanada, whose fears were about to be verified, sorry Kiba, I didn't realize you were there, well as for what I was doing, he looked over at Kurinai and winked, effectively making her blush deepen in color, I was just paying my wife a visit, as I never got to see her properly yesterday, Kiba's eyes widened, of course, that's what the smell was, when he first met Kurinai she had a familiar scent, one he was sure he had smelt before, now he knew where, it was the similar to Naruto's only with a more rosy scent, Shino raised an eyebrow, well inside he was going crazy, he wasn't expecting this, not in a hundred years, Anada on the other hand just froze, wife as soon as she heard that her worst fears came true, Naruto was already married, to her sensei no less, she could feel the water rushing to her eyes, her body began to shake, not being able to suppress it any longer, she let out an audible sob, tears flowing from her eyes she jumped away, Kurinai sighed and nodded to Naruto, she would have to talk to her, it was never meant to happen like this, she would have spoken to her at a separate time, by herself, she was cursing Kiba and Naruto, Kiba for his big mouth, and Naruto for being there in the first place, but most of all she was cursing herself, she was the one who started the kiss, she was the one who didn't tell her today when she was supposed to, 
it was already going to be a long day, having to explain herself to her own friends, without having to explain to Hinata as well, this was going to be one hell of a talk. She found Hinata back against a tree with her knees to her chest, while her head was buried in them, clutching them for dear life, she sighed, she didn't want to do this, Hinata was her student, yes, but she was more like a little sister, they had shared laughs, good times and bad times, Kurinai had given Hinata her necessary confidence boosts, approaching slowly, she knelt down next to her, slowly putting a hand on her shoulder to make her presence known. Hinata flinched from the contact made, she slowly looked up to see her sensei there looking at her with soft eyes, there was an awkward silence before Hinata decided to break it, how long? She had to know, was it before she met her which sounded almost impossible, that would have made Naruto like, 10, or was it after that, Kurinai, having a pretty good idea of what she was referring to decided it was best to answer truthfully, she didn't want to upset Hinata anymore, she didn't want to lose Hinata as a friend as well, she had grown very close to the girl, it was before I met you she verified, Hinata could only nod, she had stopped crying a few minutes before Kurinai had found her, she realized that if the two were together, then they must have been happy, it hurt her inside, it felt terrible, she realized that she cold be with Naruto, and honestly it burnt her, it felt like someone had used a fire jutsu inside her, however, she could overcome it, she would overcome it, for her sensei's sake, and Naruto's, are you happy together? Hinata couldn't help but ask, she wanted to know, it was just something she needed to know, Kurinai only nodded, after a few more moments of silence, Kurinai brought Hinata into a hug which she gladly accepted, they stayed like that for a few minutes before Kurinai broke it, she looked at Hinata and smiled, Frines. Hinata stayed silent for a minute before smiling and nodding, friend she confirmed. Meanwhile with Naruto, it was a minute since Kurinai left, and the whole time he was being eyed up by Kiba, it was an awkward silence, finally Kiba broke it by snorting, Naruto rose a eyebrow, how did you do get Kurinai sensei? Naruto chuckled, lucky I guess, Kiba grit his teeth, it was seriously pissing him off, this baka in front of him was married to his sensei who was a total babe, and he wanted to know how, that's not what I meant. How did you the dog, the loser? Get someone like Kurinai. Naruto started to get pissed off, he knew there was a lot more questions like this to come, and he didn't like it, he could tell that everyone would be asking the question when they found out, and it was going to drive him crazy, that is none of your business, so I suggest you drop a dog breath seriously, why couldn't they leave it at what it was, he was married to Kurinai, period, why everyone had to be so damn nosy was beyond him, Fiba started to growl, he was ready to lunge and rip the bastard to pieces, honestly, who did this idiot think he was, married to Kurinai or not he was still the dope, before he could make his move a voice stopped him, Kiba I won't do that if I were you, he turned around and paled, it was Kurinai, and she looked pissed, he could take Naruto any day but his sensei, he shuddered remembering the jinjutsu she put him in, it was only because she didn't want to permanently harm him that she used it for only 3 seconds, but it was enough, he looked at Naruto for a last time, and growled before walking away to stand next to Shino, with Akamaru following slowly behind, Naruto looked at Kurinai, he glad she was there, he didn't know if he could have restrained himself for leaving any permanent damage, he walked over to Kurinai and gave her a hug, it was the last time he would see her for the day, and most of tomorrow, he'll see you tomorrow, have fun he whispered in her ear, he nodded towards Shino and gave Hinata a nod and a small smile. He looked at Kiba for a few moments before smirking. Kiba was wondering why he was grinning. That doe by bed has finally gone cra. His thoughts were killed when Naruto disappeared in a crackle of lightning. Kiba's mouth was agape. How the hell did he do that? Three hours later, after training Kurinai had to go to her house in the shinobi sector of the village, she didn't actually live there, it was more for appearances, now that she was officially Naruto's wife, she could live with him and register his house as hers, now that she was dressed, back in her shinobi attire, the other girls had chosen that they would go out as normal, since it wasn't a special occasion just a meet up, she couldn't help but feel a bit of worry wash over her, they were seriously going to chew her inside and out, one doesn't get married and not tell anyone, but the sigh she got up and went out, she was walking through the main road, of Kanoha, while thinking what to say to her friends, she was stuck, she had no idea how to break it to them, she could not just walk up and say hey guys, I'm um, Kinda married with a 12 year old, and Hes Kinda the guy everyone else hates, she smiled while imagining their faces if she said that, but back on a serious note she was pretty much screwed, her friends were a tight knitted group, they were the best of friends, sisters even, they told each other everything, absolutely everything that went on in their lives was shared, except she had hidden something from them for over 7 years, finally Kur and I arrived at the Dango shop, where they always met at, they basically had their own VIP table, thanks to Anko eating there every single day, 
She wondered for a moment if Naruto would have been like that with Raymond, if she let him have his way, probably. She looked inside and spotted who she was looking for at the back table. There at the table were her three best friends. Anko Mitarashi, who was wearing her normal attire, her tan trench coat with mesh under armor and orange miniskirt. She was currently munching happily while talking to Hana. Hana Inuzuka was in the normal medical uniform, meaning she finished duty a while ago. And finally Yuga Yuzuki, who was currently in the corner of the table with a faraway look in her eyes. She was clearly troubled about something. Thing. Yuga was currently in her normal Anbu clothes, without the armor, instead having a black body warmer coat on top. With a calming sigh, she made her way to the table. Hey. Nai Chan over here. Shouted a smirking Anko, who continued to stuff her face with Dango. Kurinai had a small smile on her face, while her heart was beating rapidly. Hello, Anko. Hana, Yugao, she nodded to each of them. Hana responded with a smile and a nod, while Anko just carried on eating. However, Yugao kept on looking her way, and she was worried something was wrong. Did something happen to her on her last mission? Did she break up with Hayate? Is she having money problems? She was making a list in her head, and with each question, she mentally crossed it off. Oh no, she couldn't have. She couldn't already know. Could she? Kuzo? I was meant to tell them, if she already knows, her train of thoughts were broken by Yugao. How long? She just said it bluntly, no warmth in her voice, just the coldness of a killer. Kurinai couldn't help but flinch at her tone. She was now certain she knew, however she kept silent. Anko and Hana stopped what they were doing once they heard Yugao's tone. They never used that tone with one another, never, so it came as a shock to them. Curiosity was getting to both of them. When Kurinai just avoided their gazes and looked away, while staying silent, Anko was now slightly annoyed. It was obvious something was wrong. She hated it when her friends were like this. They were always close, but every now and again a small scuffle would occur. However, they always got over it and got back to being the closest of friends. She could honestly say that this was her family. Family. These three other girls in front of her was her family, in all but blood, after her sensei had left her to the mercy of the villagers, she was hated by everyone, they would try and attack her, belittle her and call her names behind her back, she would always fight back, not letting them have the satisfaction of breaking her, it was these three who had always looked out for her, through good and bad, so she absolutely hated seeing them like this, and it hurt her, more than any kunai could, however she put her feelings to the side for the moment and spoke out, what's wrong Yugi? Yugao looked at Anko, only to see her frowning, she cursed mentally, she forgot about how the other two, especially Anko, would react to the news, she looked to see Kurinai still refusing to meet her gaze, her frown softened slightly, she hated seeing any of her friends like this, she repeated her question, but now her voice noticeably softer, how long? Kurinai looked up at the sound of a calmer Yugao and smiled softly, hopefully they won't hate her for lying for so long, a little over two years now. Anko had enough, they were speaking about something important and she wanted to know what it was, alright, enough hidden messages, what are you two talking about? Hana just nodded, wondering what they were talking about. It was Kurinai who looked at her and gave a soft smile before bringing her hands together in a prayer motion and whispering Kai. A quick distortion in the air before now a golden ring was on her ring finger. The ring was a brilliant shining white gold color, with a quite noticeably large ruby and a heart shape on the top, with two smaller crystal diamonds on the side. On one side of the ring there was a ceiling array that was written in what looked like gold, and on the other side another ceiling array in the same type of metal. All in all it was beautiful. Kurinai looked into Anko's eyes and smiled softly, me being married. As soon as those words left her mouth, Anko froze, Kurinai was married. And from what she said to Yuga she had been married for two years now, Anko's brain was a rush in activities and thoughts, Kurinai had lied to her, she had lied to them all, she had been married for two years, and only now they find out, Anko couldn't help but feel betrayed, it stung her heart, her best friend, her sister had kept something this big hidden for so long, and not told anyone, why? Why would she do it? She wanted answers and she would get them, or so help her god she would integrate her until she did. Anna also froze, wait Kurinai is married. What do you mean you're married? And what do you mean two years? Hana shouted out, she had lied to them, plain and simple, and Hana wanted answers. Kurinai could only look at her lap, she had lied to them, she had broken one of their most valuable and sacred rules to one another, to never lie, I'm sorry, I had no choice her voice was cracking, Kurinai prided herself on being a strong-willed Kanoichi, but even she had her limits, after the Kaiubi attack she had become an orphan and had to fend for herself. When she met Naruto and the girls it was like she had a family again, but she had no choice. She really didn't. Hana raised an eyebrow at that, what do you mean you had no choice? Hell who are you married to? She wanted to know who this person was, who was it that could steal her heart so much that she had listened to him wholeheartedly. Before Kurinai could speak it was Yugao who spoke, Yuzumaki Naruto, and left it at that. She personally had no problem with the boy, sure she had read his file, strong-headed, childlike pretty much a brat, but somehow that brat had wove his way into Kurinai's heart. Anko and Hana had shocked expressions on their faces, never and I mean never did they ever think that she would have even got together with the Kaiubi Jinjuriki. 
Hana had no problems with the kid. Personally she believed that he was nothing more than a child who started off with a shit life. She had seen him when he was still a child, no older than four and living on the streets. She had asked her mum about him at the time. However her mum told her to leave it alone. And that she did. Anko on the other hand felt something deeper towards the kid. They were kindred spirits in a sense. Both of them were hated and scorned by the village for no fault of their own. And both did different things to gain attention. He wore a bright orange jumpsuit, which was way too bright for any ninja, and was a prankaholic, while she on the other hand dressed very revealing and had a sadistic side to her, she felt sorry for the boy. It was Hana who finished her train of thoughts first. Why? Why keep it from us? We've been friends for over seven years. Do you trust us that little? Her and I couldn't help but flinch, she sighed and looked at Hana now, as I said I couldn't say anything, not because I don't trust you, but because I was ordered not to she noticed their facial expressions becoming slightly softer, it was Yuga this time who spoke, who? Who ordered you? And why for that matter? Again Kurunai sighed it was to be a long night, it was Hokage-sama, you all know of Naruto-kun's problem she received nods from them, who didn't know of his tenant. Hell only those who were currently 15 and younger did not know since at the time they were too young to understand and were not thought for fear of repercussions it would have caused. Seeing the nods Kurunai continued, after I saved Naruto one night, Hokage-sama told me to keep what happened secret, and so I did, as time went on and I saw more of Naruto. He himself told me to keep it secret. He said I don't want anyone attacking you because of me he had said. I tried to refuse, but he just told the hookage about it, and since then it became a order. She finished with a small smile. The three listened to their friend's story closely. By what Kurunai said it seemed that she cared deeply for the boy, which was obvious with a ring on her finger. They were no longer angry or mad or even hurt anymore. They were simply happy that their friend had found someone special. They each decided to have a very special talk with Naruto at a later date. Kurunai saw their faces and continued speaking. I do have one thing to say though, the Naruto that you know isn't the one I know. She finished with a smirk, glad that they seemed to have moved on and start to accept the situation. Honestly one of her greatest fears was that they didn't accept Naruto and hated him for what he contained. So she she had very carefully slipped slight questions regarding Naruto and thoughts on him. Unfortunately it was a failure since they wouldn't speak about it a lot and changed the subject quite quickly. She was disappointed her plan failed. She was even more worried about telling them after her failed attempts. She could honestly say she had no idea what she would have done. She was stuck between a rock and a hard place. Finally after hours of thought, she decided, if worst came to worst she would stick by her husband. It was in her vows, for better for worse. She loved her friends, they really were her family. But Naruto was her entire world. World, she called to imagine life without him. Yuga rose an eyebrow at that. What did she mean? Sure she understands that people are different when alone or with certain people. But she had been assigned to watch over him when he was 11, and he always looked and acted the same. Shit. She had been played, no not just her the entire village, he knew they were watching him, and he played them all like fools, always acting like a orange wearing, loud brash, hard headed fool, while secretly being someone completely different, Naruto Uzumaki. Who are you exactly? What do you mean? Hana was slightly confused, what did she mean by that? Sure people were different when not around an audience, but you can't completely change personalities, can you? Something clicked in her head, and she was mentally slapping herself, deception, one of the most basic ninja skill, and the most dangerous, if you underestimated your opponent in a fight it could lead to death. But Lanko was smiling softly, she knew what Kurunai meant, how could she not she had been dong at herself for the last decade, acting and dressing like a complete whore which was completely fake, she was still a virgin as no one would even think of fucking the snake whore for fear of catching a vile disease. It hurt Anko to know that she probably would never find love, but she lived with it, she also acted like a sadist, okay so the sadistic side was her own, but in her defense, one doesn't spend over a year with Orochimaru as a sensei, and not pick up a trait or two from him, she understood what Naruto was doing, and had to admit for a brat he had done pretty well. She looked at a now smirking Kurunai, and gave one of her own smirks. Well Nai-chan how different is he? Kurunai was matching Anko's smirk and responded, well that would be telling the. Anko's smirk dropped and pouted like a small toddler who lost his drink which Kurunai thought was cute, HMPH. Yara no fun Nai chan. Hana now had a dangerous look in her eye, which didn't go unnoticed by the other three, Naiyi Chayan, if you've been married to Naruto for over two years, now it must mean that you two have, she elaborated by pushing her right index finger through her left index and thumb fingers, which were an O sign. Kurunai was now blushing up a storm, she didn't want to answer those questions, yet, but as fate saw it she would have to, she looked at her lap while mumbling something, Hana who was feeling mischievous cupped a hand behind her ear, sorry what was that? I didn't hear you, Kurunai began mumbling again this time some parts being understandable, s, pli, f, s, oh sure Hana heard what she had said, she just wanted a small amount of payback to Kurunai, sorry, what was that? I'm sorry Nai-chan ya are gonna have to speak up, we can't hear you which only made the other two giggle, yes. A couple of times. 
She blurted out, seriously and white at her, before she realized what she said and put both hands over her mouth, now going a shade of red that matched her eyes. Enko smirked, Suu, how long before we get little blonde-haired red-eyed Gakus? Enku Ujai I and Kuran I whined, which only served to make the other three laugh full heartedly at her embarrassment, it was good things were back to normal. The golden blur whizzed past the trees of Hai no Kuni, that blur was Naruto, and he was returning from a mission, it was nothing major, just a one night slaughter mission, the usual, sometimes Naruto thought about the life of a shinobi, what they endured and what they did, the bottom line was that all shinobi were thugs, just glorified versions. The only difference between shinobi and bandits is that one is able to utilize chakra, while the others can't, he had been given a low level day rank mission. There were a large group of bandits and ninja residing near the Cha no Kuni border. His mission objectives were simple, complete annihilation, and leave nothing behind. The group had over 100 members and were known as the Bombers. Ironic really if you think about how most of them died. Naruto decided to make it quick and simple, since he had team training in the morning. Upon arriving at the bandit side, he quickly made a mental map of the entire area that they were in. Once the area had been mapped out, Naruto decided to make them go out with a bang. He created 150 cage bunchons and let them just waltz into the bandit camp. It was pure gold to see their faces when the first clone exploded taking two men with it, and with that the blitz began, after about two minutes of continuous bombing, there was only one left, the leader of the group, now this man was different because he was a shinobi, a missing nin to be precise, Hiro Kanado high B rank missing nin from Kusagakur, he was quickly dealt with. Upon realizing who Naruto was he begged for mercy only to find none, since this was an undercover mission, Naruto had set a light to the whole camp taking anything of interest, which was easier said than done, considering Naruto cold do fire jutsu. Finally, after 10 minutes of burning, Naruto took off, thus leaving us to where we are now, exactly 5 miles away from the gates of Konoha. How does Naruto know this? Well in fact it's quite simple actually, okay maybe not that simple, but it is quite basic, Naruto has full control of the Hiroshin Jutsu, which allows him instantly teleport to anywhere he has his special kunai, or the formula seal, now like most Jutsu it has a side effect, and said effect for the Hiroshin is the strain it puts on the body, so to get around that strain Naruto, and he believed his Tausen did the same thing trained their body to be able to move at insane speeds, only through this are they able to use the Hiroshin to its maximum potential, however even with this done, there is still a limit of how much one's body can handle, that limit is 5 miles. When going at the speed of light any more than 5 miles and the body starts to rip, now that doesn't mean that it's impossible to go more than 5 miles, in fact Naruto has gone up to 1000 miles once, all the way from Kumo. After that little stunt Naruto's muscles was ripped in several places, torn body tissues and internal bleeding, was it not for the Kaiubi, Naruto would be dead. He was still working on a way around that, to be able to move around the continent in mere seconds, would be the ultimate skill for Naruto. Again there are several other drawbacks to the technique, only he could do large distances if he is ever able to, in normal Hiroshin close range, he is able to carry someone up to 2 miles, before any side effects occur to the person due to the need of special speed training. This was the same with Kuranai when he first teleported with her. After months of training on pure speed 7 months to be exact, Kuranai was able to go the full 5 miles with Hiroshin, together with Naruto, which led Naruto to creating the special seal on his and her ring. The seal contained part of his chakra inside it, which is vital to using the jutsu, as only his chakra could activate the seal. He guessed it was a genetic seal, allowing only blood relatives to use. Finally reaching his destination Naruto jumped out of the trees in his gold outfit. He was wearing a golden lion mask, the standard Anbu outfit with a golden yellow trench coat, with the kanji for golden storm on the back written in black. He was still his normal height of 5, 4 in his opinion. This looked way more badass than the normal clothes he wore, which he made a mental note to change soon. Approaching the front gate he just took a quick look at the two gate guards. It was 4, 30 a.m., and they were sleeping, typical. However these guys were cool. They were nice to him whilst being idiot Naruto. The two guards were Izumo, who was wearing a bandana which had the Konoha Hitai 8 sewed on. He had brown hair which covered the right side of his face. He was currently resting his head on his hand while snoring quite loudly. To his right was Katetsu. He had black spiky hair and a bandage going across his face and over his nose. He was currently leaning back on his chair. With a large snot bubble coming out of his nose, Naruto sweat dropped. He slipped past them with ease. Once out of sight he created a single cage bunchon to give Hokage his report. He usually did this, as it was in standard mission, even though undercover one he would let a bunch and give the report, he was silently jumping through the rooftops, enjoying the early morning mist that hid most of the village's scenery, he breathed the moist air, slightly tickling the back of his throat, it was one thing he enjoyed about Kanoha, along with the warm weather all year round, the mist during the slightly colder mornings of winter, gave the area a cool and mystic look, and Naruto loved it, whilst making his way through the roofs, letting his mind wander, he couldn't help but shiver when remembering Kurane's friend's little chat with him, the threats 
they had made, he shivered again he hoped that the threats would be just that, threats, not that he could ever do anything to hurt Kurinai on purpose, hell no. He would kill himself a thousand times before he let any harm come to her, especially if it was from him. Finally he arrived at his house. It was on the edge of Kanoha in a secluded area, nice and private. It was surrounded by a 7-meter wall that had a barrier seal around it, along with several other backups. Walking up to the gate, he placed his blood on the seal, then added chakra, allowing the procedure to take place. The huge metal gate swung open, allowing Naruto to see a small tiled road with grass fields on both sides. There were rose bushes surrounding the walls, with small flower patches arranged around the the grass, making his way through the road, Naruto looked at his house, it wasn't that huge, two stories tall, it was painted a plain white which only added to its beauty, it was a normal house, except it was significantly bigger, on the inside it was different though, there was a total of five bedrooms, three bathrooms with extra toilet, a dining area that was connected to the living room which you first enter from the front door, all in all the house was normal, above ground, underneath however was a completely different story, underneath was a total of six acres of basement, that is if you could call it a basement, it was mainly divided into three parts, a dojo which was covered in gravity and resistance seals, effectively making it into a training room, a library which contained every scroll he had obtained from raids and missions, along with his own inheritance of scrolls, Kurinai had spent a lot of time arranging them into a specific system which worked perfectly, even if it was so darn simple, they were divided into the categories they fell under such as, Father's Scrolls Win Style Jutsu C Rank, he had learned quickly not to mess with the system, he paled at the memory, finally there was Naruto's proudest part of his home, the Jutsu Room, in this room was where Naruto practiced his new Jutsus, or tried to perfect old ones, this room was the biggest out of all of them, covering four acres of the underground alone, not including being the one with the highest ceiling, 10 meters high or low. It was also completely covered in seals, mostly barrier seals that made sure that the walls were not affected, but there was also stabilizer seals, which allowed the room to shake freely, but not affect the earth around it. It was a high-class space-time seal, and it took Naruto months to perfect, which made him all the more proud. The seal, when in use, would temporarily allow the room to move through the ground, becoming ghost-like, meaning when a powerful jutsu was used the room would phase through the ground and walls, snapping out of his thoughts. Naruto repeated the process at the gate on the door of his home, which was a brilliant mahogany color. Naruto walked up to his room, slowly opening the door hoping not to wake Kurinai. When the door was fully opened, he was greeted to the sight of Kurinai sleeping soundlessly underneath the orange duvet cover. She was facing away from the bed and slightly off the side from the center. She looked so peaceful, had hate to ruin that. Slowly getting undressed Naruto got into the bed and kept his back away from Kurinai. Already having taken a bath at a nearby lake after the mission was over, he felt he didn't need one. He was about to drift off to sleep when he felt an arm wrap around his midsection and pull him backwards. His back was instantly met with Kurinai's chest. While she had both arms around his stomach and had her head rested upon his shoulder. So, when was you going to tell me you were back? Giving him a kiss on the cheek she returned her head on his shoulder, Naruto had a soft smile on his face, whilst looking outside the window, I wasn't, you looked peaceful, so I let you sleep, was his reply to her earlier question, Kurinai frowned, no matter how strong he was she couldn't help but worry about him, sure he was the strongest ninja she knew, but he was still 13 years old, no matter how strong or powerful he was, right now he was still only a teenager, and so was she, she sighed sometimes she forgot that she too was only a teenager, I told you to tell me whenever you finish a mission, you know how much I worry she finished with a frown, Naruto could practically feel the frown on Kurinai's face, he knew she had it, especially when she she was worried, she has the same look, he would never understand the reason she worried so much, he was fully capable of completing any missions thrown his way, but he hated to see his night chan upset him sorry, but you know how much I hate disturbing you, especially when you look so beautiful he finished and at her, she responded by smiling and giving him a quick peck on the lips, Kurinai then rolled onto her back and brought Naruto's head to her chest, whilst running a hand through his hair, well Naruto it seems you was able to sweet talk me again, honestly I think him getting soft on you, this caused Naruto to smirk, I know I I know, but you can't deny, you love my sweet talk Naruto smirked and continued, judging from the blush on your face, I'm guessing incorrect, Kurinai's response was to smack him lightly on his forehead, Baka, behavior ya will be cooking your own ramen from now on, Naruto shot upwards and turned to face her, his finger pointed at her, you won't dare, you can't then he would have continued if he didn't realize that Kurinai was wearing a semi-see-through sleeping gown, he crossed his arms and gave a childlike pout, causing her to giggle, talking about denial, Yao've been denying me something else lately, he just looked her up and down, Kurinai just smirked and grabbed him by the shoulders, forcing him down to her face before slamming her lips on his, draining ground 7, yo.
was the call from Naruto as he arrived at training ground 7, he was feeling energized, yay that's it, energized, Kurinai had made sure of that, he was desperately fighting down the nosebleeds, she was too damn good, he looked over at his teammates, Sasuke was leaning against one of the training posts, in the past two weeks they had slightly gotten closer as friends, Sasuke wouldn't openly admit it, but Naruto could tell, they had mainly been working on speed, strength and stamina, or as Kakashi called it SSS, genius, Kakashi had told them it would be best to work on the basics first, and Naruto called to agree more, it was due to this that he had upgraded his seals on his body, once a 20x gravity seal, was now at 25x gravity, he had trouble adjusting to the extra pressure at first, channeling tons of chakra to his limbs just to move normally, Sasuke had also gotten a lot faster, also his chakra control had skyrocketed, but perhaps it was a side effect of the Sharingan, the Kashi had helped Sasuke activate his Sharingan by a less than pleasant way. It was after the first week, Kakashi and Sasuke was having a all-out out spar Kakashi of course holding back. It was during this spar that Kakashi had taunted him, mocking him, telling him how much of a failure he was, saying that Itachi at that age was an Anbu captain, while he was still a genin. The final straw was when Kakashi had said, what's wrong Sasuke? You're remembering your clan. All of them dying in front of your eyes. How was it? How did it feel? Yara is useless now as you was then, pathetic, needless to say Sasuke was furious, unconsciously activating his Sharingan and going on the assault, Kakashi had to knock him out to and him calm down, when he woke up he just up and left, he didn't come back until two days later, that was when Kakashi was able to explain what he had done, and why, in the end, Sasuke accepted the explanation, but still held a small hatred towards Kakashi slowly, but steadily they went back to normal, it was obvious that he had hit a nerve, and who could blame him, Naruto didn't know what he would do if he was powerless to save those he loved, it was a fate worse than death, a feeling of worthlessness, shaking his head, breaking out of his thoughts he looked over to Sakura, he could definitely say that their relationship had gotten a lot better, after a while of training together and getting used to Naruto not being a loud mouthed idiot, she had come to accept him a bit more for what he was, a strong and capable shinobi who was the second strongest on their team after Kakashi sensei, she had improved drastically during the two weeks of training, mainly in stamina and speed, her strength was still low, mainly because she had been dieting before graduation, she was currently being taught some of the more basic jinjutsu and basic analysis medical jutsu to set her off, since then she had been more interested in the medical field, medical jutsu and jinjutsu not being one of Kakashi's forte, made teaching it difficult for him, however he did manage to get her some scrolls on the subject which she thanked him for and instantly started reading, up in the trees was Kakashi, he was just waiting for Naruto to come before making an appearance, Kakashi was extremely proud with his team, in the past two weeks, not only were they able to improve by a mile, but they had started to get closer as a team something Kakashi wanted to make sure of, they were coming along nicely together, all three of them had shown him that they were serious about being a ninja, well almost, Sakura still had some fangirlism in her, but one does not be a fangirl for over two years, then suddenly stop, she was gradually getting there, hopefully by the end of the month she would be rid of it, Kakashi still remembered the talk he had with her at the start of the training program, flashback, Sakura, could you stay behind, there is something I need to talk to you about, Sakura was confused and a bit curious to what he wanted to talk about, but she stayed behind as per asked and waited for her sensei to begin, Kakashi sensing no one was around turned to Sakura, he had a very serious look in his eye, his shoulders were no longer slumped, and he looked ready for battle it made Sakura nervous, never having seen this side of him, he looked at her for a minute, both in complete silence, before talking Sakura, why did you become a ninja? Sakura blinked, she had never been asked that question before, she could remember why she first wanted to be a ninja it sounded cool and awesome, she always admired ninjas that she saw on the street or in the roofs, however after the academy started, she started to learn more about the life of a ninja it started to sound less and less appealing, she then started to get bullied, but some help from Eno she overcame those bullies leading to her and Eno becoming friends, it was then that she decided she wanted to become a ninja to protect herself and be able to fight, later in the year she came across Sasuke and worked up a crush on him, since then she was only devoted to making him acknowledge her and gain his love, she breathed in before talking, well at the start I wanted to be able to protect myself from any harm that came my way and protect my home with my family, but now I guess it's to gain Sasuke's affection and love, Akashi stared at her for a moment, making Sakura uneasy under his gaze, he sighed before talking, well I'm sorry to say this Sakura, but if you don't refine that first reason inside you, then it'll be forced to drop you from the ninja program, this caused Sakura to freeze, remove me from the ninja program, she mentally asked herself, she could feel the tears rush to her eyes, she let out a small sob, Kei Kakashi sensei w what do you mean? 
The Kashi let out another sigh. She didn't understand the life of a ninja. Not like the other two, Sasuke understood. Coming from a ninja clan, one as prestigious as the Ichiha clan knew all about the violence and death that came with being a ninja. The events that occurred with Itachi further showed him the life a ninja must endure. Naruto knew all too much as well. With his childhood and loneliness, the beatings he received, he was definitely aware of what a cruel cold world they were living in. Sakura on the other hand had no idea. She lived a sheltered life. Her mother being on the civilian council gave her a privileged childhood away from the hardships of life. She never saw family members return home with blood-stained clothes or wounds on their bodies. She never had have to run and hide for her survival at the age of four. Barely old enough to fend for herself. Nor or did she have to put up with the shame of a father which ruined the life of a five-year-old, newly graduated ninja? He looked at her tearful expression, not really caring, sure he didn't enjoy being cold to her, but this had to be done. He would have to open her eyes. What I mean is you need to fix up, stop frowning over Sasuke and focus on your training. I don't care how long you've liked him, or how has Mr. Perfect or how cool he is. From now on you either start training properly and show me you want to become a Kanoichi, or you get the fuck out of my team. This isn't a game Sakura, people die. I know countless comrades that have died by my side. Many of them were deadly serious and devoted about being a ninja. I don't want another person to die for some bullshit crush, or because eating makes you fatter, either you start pulling your weight or you go, you have until the end of the training program until I give you my final decision, and with that he disappeared into the trees, leaving Sakura to her thoughts, flashback end, after that Sakura had become a lot more focused on her training, he was afraid that she would focus only to begin with, then slowly sink back to her old habits, however, instead of slowing down in progress, she only seemed to be accelerating, seeing them all here, he decided it was time for him to join them and tell them the new routine. Yo. He appeared with a cloud of smoke, Naruto and Sasuke sent a small nod his way, while making their way towards him, while Sakura gave a small smile, she had also been a lot more retreated after the talk, in no way lacking confidence but less vocal. Naruto gave his sensei a grins, so sensei what we going to be doing today? Akashi responded with his own eye smile, well today I was hoping to test some of your elemental affinities and maybe even teach you some new jutsus. This caused Sasuke to smirk. He always enjoyed training and learning new jutsus, anything to help him fight against him in the end. Sakura looked at Kakashi with a hopeful look. She enjoyed learning medical ninjutsu. Even though she only knew a few diagnostic jutsus, she wanted to be able to help her teammates and comrades in actual battle. Naruto had a faraway look on his face. He was thinking of how to avoid this. He didn't want them to know that he had four elements. It could seriously create a lot of unwanted question that he didn't want to answer yet. Bakashi proceeded to bring out four pieces of paper. Taking one and putting it in between his hands he looked at the three. This is chakra paper. And it's made from a special tree that is grown with chakra. So when you channel chakra through the paper it will react in a certain way. Thus tell you your element. Sensei, what do you mean it will tell us our element? Ask a generally confused Sakura, how could paper tell your elemental affinity? Even if it was special paper. Akashi I smiled at her, she was showing curiosity to learn, that was good, well you see, it all depends on your affinity. If you have wind type will split in half, if you have fire it will go up in flames, if you have water it will get wet, if you have earth it will crumble, and for lightning, it will scrunch up and crinkle. As you know the elements go around in a chain metaphorically speaking, wind beats lightning, lightning beats earth, earth beats water, water beats fire, and fire beats wind. Now just because you have the elemental advantage, it does not mean that your jutsu will automatically win. For example, a wind style master can easily beat an adept in fire style. The three nodded their heads, accepting his explanation. Akashi smiled under his mask. They were going to be excellent ninja in the future. He then gave Sakura a piece of paper. Okay now Sakura, I want you to try and focus on drawing out your chakra, just a small amount, then channel it into the paper Sakura did as instructed, drawing out a small amount of chakra before channeling it through the paper. She let out a gasp when the paper started to crumble in her hands. Akashi I smiled. It seems your affinity is earth. Earth, an excellent element when in defense perfect for a medical ninja. This caused Sakura to give a wide smile, she wanted to become a medic so badly now, it was her dream to become an excellent medical ninja, like Tsunade of the Sanin, she remembered reading books about her legendary skills in the medical field, and the countless lives she had saved during the second and third ninja wars. Kakashi looked over to Sasuke, who was smirking not being able to contain his excitement. As soon as Kakashi had given Sasuke the paper which was almost snatched out of his hands, instantly Sasuke started channeling chakra into the paper, but was shocked when nothing happened, turning to his sensei he asked, did I do something wrong? 
The Kashi had a distant look on his face, obviously thinking about something, turning back to Sasuke said, when you draw out your chakra try and split it in two, then channel it through both hands and into the paper. Sasuke blinked, before nodding, he closed his eyes and started to draw out his chakra, splitting it into two he then channeled it into the paper, causing the paper to crinkle up before combusting in flames, Sasuke looked at Kakashi with a raised eyebrow. Kakashi gave a eye smile, this is great. It means you have a dual affinity. This caused Sasuke to give off an arrogant smirk, it means you've got both lightning and fire affinities, however training to control them will be extremely hard, especially since they both have different ways of mastering them, he spoke the last bit quietly, though he knew how hard it was training in an affinity, Hell had done it for four of the elements, four. And boy was it hard, especially since they had different properties when training them, for example water type chakra flowed out of the body, as if it was made of silk that was the end goal anyway, for those who did not have it mastered it was more wild and uncontrollable, leaving them with slightly poorer chakra control, whilst lightning type chakra was more wild, and when unmastered could damage the person's body, when mastered however it added to a person's reaction speed, each chakra affinity had a different property that aided the person when it was being used, fire type chakra gave extra resistance against heat and other fire type moves, water type chakra gave better chakra control, which was why it was mainly used for medics, earth type chakra gave a strength and defense boost, lightning type chakra gave extra speed and reflexes, and wind type chakra gave better agility and boosted attack power. Kakashi then turned to Naruto and held out the paper for him to take, Naruto just looked at it and then back to Kakashi, but sensei, I already know my affinities. He said while rubbing the back of his head nervously he was praying to Kami that they would accept that, Kakashi narrowed his eyes slightly, oh. Then what affinity do you have Naruto? Naruto froze, he never chose which element he would tell them about, then it hit him, he cold choose he already showed his Hyoten element, meaning he had to tell them he had water and wind affinities, he also remembered using a earth jutsu, the inside of his head sounded like a drunken sailor party, Naruto returned his attention to Kakashi, still rubbing his head, well you see, I kin to have three elemental affinities with a sub-element as well, Kakashi looked at him with wide eyes, Sakura who was naturally confused turned to her sensei, Kakashi sensei, what's a sub-element? Kakashi turned his attention to Sakura, with a dead serious face, a sub-element is a mixture between two primary elements, they usually are specific to a clan, question is, turning to Naruto, how did you get one? Naruto was cursing, of course Sharingan no Kakashi would know about sub-elements, who was he trying to kid here? He was cursing and cursing, why did he have to show off? I should have stuck with Futin and get it over with. Damn you old man, why cold you just screw the council and make me a jonin? But in reality he knew why, it would create too much of a political problem, just him being trained by the Sandame, would never sit well with the council, not just the civilian council at that, he was sure he could deal with them easily, however he was pretty sure some of the ninja council and clans hated his guts too, exactly which clans, he wasn't sure at the moment, but unless he became a clan head and became above the law, in a sense he was screwed if he didn't play nice, though he was sure he could run away, him and Kur and I both, with them both being S rank ninja and above, they were sure that any other village would accept them, especially with Naruto's status as a Jinjiriki and his bloodlines, he was sure that Kumo would welcome him with open arms, but that wasn't the problem, it just wasn't fair, not to him, but to Kurunai, sure she would come with him, he was certain of that, but it didn't seem fair for him to take her leave her home, they hadn't treated her badly, she had lived here her whole life, and was raised to love the village, he cold do it to her, he cold drip her away from any friends and family she had left in Kanoha, that was the main decider for him, he would deal with it for her, he didn't care what they tried to do to him or how much they hated him, he would stay and be a ninja of Kanoha, for Kurunai and for his Nichan, ah his parents, that was a sore spot for Naruto, when he was younger, he remembered when he was first told, he was absolutely destroyed, it took him weeks on end to try and come to terms with his father doing what he did, he remembered for a whole year he hated the man, no he resented him, he couldn't believe what his own father had done to him, it was just unreal at the time, but as he grew older, so did his feelings for Kurunai, and at one point he swore that he would do anything to protect her, it was at that point that Naruto had realized what his father had done, he had used his last breath of life to protect the village and people he loved, for a while, Naruto thought it was ironic, how the villagers treated their hero's son with such hate. After a while he managed to forgive his father wishing him some sort of peace in the afterlife, which he knew would never come due to the deal he made with the Shijinami, but he hoped he could find some sort of peace. He also remembered thinking about his mother, now she was a small enigma to him, sure she was dead, but the date of her death was two weeks after the ceiling, now at first he thought that she may have survived the initial attack and died later due to her wounds, but after searching through the hospital files and finding hers, he found out that she was never submitted into the hospital after the attack, at first he thought
thought maybe they never put it down on paper, since there was sure to have been hundreds of casualties at the time, and services might have gotten sloppy, however he began questioning again when it never stated her means of death, it just said deceased, and that was what got him thinking. He checked through all the people's files who had died during the same period after the fox attack, and it had stated their means of death and exact time, when he had brought it up with the sand aim, he had gotten nervous and tried to change the subject, it had made Naruto feel betrayed that the man he had trusted the most in his life would lie to him, he still wonders what actually happened to his mother, Bakashi on the other hand was deep in thought, a bloodline eh? I wonder who you actually are Naruto Uzumaki, truth be told Kakashi only knew of one other who had a sub-element, and that was his late sensei, Minato Namikaze, along with his famous Hiroshin and Rasengan, that made him the Konoha no Kairoi Senken. He was once known as Kami no Arashi Pn, God of the Storms, for his godlike abilities over his Rantan, and in truth his Rantan was one of the reasons he got the name Namikaze, which was only given to him after he had became a genin. Kakashi still remembers his sensei telling him that particular story, but every other sub-elemental user he has met has belonged to a clan, however rare they were. It wasn't impossible. He remembered Minato telling him that if one has a high enough affinity for two chakra natures, then they could possibly create a sub-element however the difference between self-created sub-elements and bloodline created is that they don't pass on to the children. Bakashi looked at Naruto, who seemed to be in a world of his own, he waved his hand in front of his face, waiting for a reaction, nothing, it was like he wasn't there at all. Slap. Naruto steps back and shakes his head, he needed that, still it didn't stop him from giving Kakashi a hard glare, which was shrugged off, now Naruto, if you would be so kind and tell us what elements you have, and how you have a sub-element, Naruto regains his composure and loosens his glare, hi, I have an affinity for wind, water and earth, with a sub-element for ice Kakashi nods his head, as for how I got ice, all three lean in closer, I don't know, Q face falls. Once regaining his composure Kakashi was thinking hard, he had no idea what he could teach Naruto, he was sure that Naruto if left alone would be fine, hell had be more than fine, but he felt as a sensei he needed to at least help in some way, Sakura was in awe, he had four elements. That was so cool. He still wasn't as cool as Sasuke, Sasuke on the other hand was red with rage, Naruto had one-upped him again. He needed to train stronger, he will catch up to Naruto first, then head go and kill him. Bakashi sighed when he realized that there was nothing he could teach Naruto, he was stuck, he was sure that Naruto was almost perfect in all of the basic ninja arts, Naruto was fast almost as fast as him, he as sure as hell was strong, as far as he could tell from the exam, and what other jutsu Naruto showed during training Naruto had a good arsenal of jutsu, the only thing he could teach him would be jinjutsu, which was a no-go since he was married to the best jinjutsu user in the village, he honestly had nothing to teach him, the only thing he could actually do with Naruto was train plain and simple, he would be able to train the two of them him and Naruto and increase their physical training. He knew that the tittle of him being the third strongest in the village was a bit outdated, after over six months of not training almost at all he had become lazy, he realized that after getting his ass handed to him by Naruto, six months before there was no way he would have lost that easily, but it had happened and he had learned from his mistake. Ami knows what would have happened if he continued like that only to face a high level missing nin. Breaking out of his stupor Kakashi turns to his genin team, okay my cute little genin's cute glares today we will continue as normal, tomorrow well get started on the new regime. And with that they got started. Anoha Streets. Naruto had just finished training with Kakashi. It was a Luong day. Kakashi had decided since today was the last day of pure Sisal training, that today they should train the hardest. They had started with 100 laps around the training ground. Needless to be said, you could see the smile on Kakashi's face when Sakura had managed to do 51 laps. Sasuke managed to complete 76 before passing out and Naruto as usual had completed the whole 100 with relative ease. He had then gone and tested their strength and chakra control. Naruto coming last on that test, much to his ire, with Sakura coming on top with Sasuke not far behind, after that they had gone into sparring, which lasted of all 10 minutes before Sakura was defeated by Sasuke, who in turn went into a 20-minute sparring match with Naruto, needless to say they were all knackered and worn out, which is where we join our knucklehead in disguise, on his way to Ichirikus. Naruto sighed, he was honestly cursing this whole genin thing, this was way below his level, and the old man knew it, however the worst thing was that he wasn't even placed on Kurane's team. Oh how he had prayed to the old man to place him in her team, stating that together they would be a perfect team and be able to protect the genin on the team better, the old man had shot down the idea, stating that it would be uneven to change the teams if he would split them apart, each genin team was specialized from the start, just thinking about the teams he could easily tell what they were created to do, team 10, with the Ino Shikacho trio was an information gathering cell, with the way that their clan jutsus worked in perfect sync, it was like they were created for one another, team 8 was a tracking and retrieval team, with the biac 
Akigan as the eyes, the Inuzunka senses and Akamaru as the nose, and with Shino and his Kakechu bugs made up the body along with Kurunai to add extra defense and cover, they were a perfect team for tracking. Finally his team Team 7 was an assault team, with Sasuke and his Sharingan, and him as the Kayubi Jinjiriki they already had a deadly combo, also with Sakura as a possible medic, they were a perfect team for assault and assassination missions. Reluctantly Naruto had agreed with the old man to keep the teams like they are, in exchange that they would still be able to go on joint missions together. Him and Kurunai without a doubt made a deadly combo, with Kurunai covering his worst aspect of the ninja arts Jinjutsu, it made them almost unstoppable. Not that anyone who had gone against them had ever survived, it made Naruto's heart warm when he thought about Kurunai, honestly he had no idea what he would have been like without her, another Itachi maybe. Just the thought of him being like Itachi made him shiver, honestly Naruto had never been on a mission with Itachi, but from what he had heard the man was almost robotic, he won't be surprised if he didn't even blink, looking up, he noticed some of the glares he was receiving from the people of Konoha, it made his heart sink slightly, the people he protected every day and had done so much for, still hated him, arriving at his destination, he made his way in, instantly he frowned when people started to get up and try to make their way out, obviously not having paid, it made his anger soar, all it took was him to enter the stand, and and the whole place would be empty out, it was one of the reasons why he ordered so much Raymond whenever he came, that and it was so damn good. However today he wasn't having them disrespect the Ichirikus anymore, especially A.M., she was the closest thing he could call family, like his big sister, he still remembered all those times he would spend talking to her, and they would laugh and joke and go out together, she would occasionally take him to the park and take him shopping sometimes, ever since the age of four he had been coming here, he still remembered that fateful day, flashback, the small child was running through the main road of Kanoha, he was running as fast as his little legs could carry him, he cold standed, had been living on the streets for a whole month now, it was so cold during the nights, so he had taken shelter in one of the training grounds, where he had found an old fox den. He had been stealing bread and other food from anywhere he could find some, sometimes even digging into garbage cans, the memories almost made him puke, he hated his life, and apparently his life hated him too, he could still see the looks on their faces as he passed by, demon, freak, ugly, hideous, monster, it only took a few of those words to break his spirit, thus he did the only thing he could, he ran, he ran as fast as he could, not daring to look back, he closed his eyes for a second when turning the corner when, slam, he fell back while clutching his head in pain, he had hit something, or someone, but his head hurt so much he couldn't see what he had hit, slowly opening his eyes he saw another kid, who was years older than him, she had long brown hair and a round heart shaped face, she was wearing a white long sleeved t-shirt and black long pants, with black sandals, she was currently shaking her head with her eyes shut tight, there was a brown box next to her, Naruto was pancaking, he had hurt someone, he had actually hurt someone, if anyone saw this would seriously beat him, he had never ever hit someone before, either on purpose or as an accident either way he knew the consequences for him would be far worse than any other child, quickly getting up he rushed to the girl and began to panic, oh Kami, I'm so sorry. It was an accident. Sorry. I'll help please, oh god I'm sorry. The girl on the floor looked up to see a young boy, who looked to be no older than four, looking at her with a worried expression on his face, no he didn't look worried, he looked terrified. Just looking at his clothes he looked filthy, he was wearing a brown. Shirt with brown shorts, reaching a hand out to his cheek to where she saw three whisker-like marks she stroked his face, hoping to calm him down a bit, when Naruto saw her hand reach out towards his face he naturally flinched, however he stayed put and awaited his punishment with closed eyes which was scrunched tightly together, which further confused the girl, he was a little kid who was like 4-5 years old, and he was, scared of her. Why would he be scared? When she touched his whiskers she was surprised to find out that they were real, he had whiskers. Instantly she started to caress his face, feeling them, slowly she brought up her other hand and felt his other cheek, they were real. She couldn't believe it, he had whiskers, personally she thought they were really cute. Naruto was expecting a slap, a punch hell even a scratch, what he wasn't expecting was for her to stroke his cheeks, strangely it felt good, soon he was melting in her hands and let out a long pure realizing what he just did, he snaked back and started blushing, looking at the ground for some kind of advice, sadly none came, Bayam blinked, did he just, oh my god. He did. He just purred. In less than a second she instantly flashed in front of him, bringing his head into her chest all the while screaming, kawaii. He was just so cute. It was unbelievable, she was rubbing his cheek into her small chest while stroking his other cheek, he was just so cute. She couldn't help it, she had to show him to her dad. Naruto on the other hand was frozen in place, she was, hugging him. He had never been hugged before, never, it felt, nice, slowly he brought his hands around her waist, and once he felt she wasn't moving anywhere he clamped down on her, she was a full head taller than him, unconsciously his eyes started to water while gripping onto her for dear life, he felt warm inside, was this how some of the other kids felt? 
he felt warm and fuzzy, feeling something wet on her chest A.M. looked down at the small boy who was crying. Why was he crying? She was just hugging him, then she noticed his hands moving up to her waist making her straighten up slightly, wondering what he was doing, when he clamped them around her, she slumped back and started to rub his back slightly, hey, it's alright, no one's hurt, no harm done, this caused a small boy to look up at her, when he saw her smiling at him, he just returned back to crying, this time twice as hard, am frowned, hey hey, it's alright, are you lost? He shook his head. What's wrong then? A small boy looked up at her and managed to choke out. Thank you. A.M. was a small girl, only age 10, but he was thanking her. For what? She didn't do anything big, did she? All she did was give him a hug. What? Why are you thanking me? I didn't do anything this caused him to violently shake his head. No. His response slightly startled her. It was the complete opposite to the voice she heard before. It was more confident and slightly demanding, all the while still keeping an innocence about it. You did do something. You didn't hit me. What? What do you mean I didn't hit you? Of course I didn't it was an accident, they happened. The small kid looked up at her, still holding on to her tightly, no. Not when I do it, they always hit me for no reason, I I, I thought you would too. A.M. blinked before bringing him into a big hug, someone was hitting him. How could they do such a thing? He looked so adorable and innocent how could they? Looking back down at the kid, she started blushing realizing he was still hugging her, um, could you get off me, please? Instantly Naruto jumped back, slightly missing the feeling from the hug, while looking at the floor, GG Goman. This caused AM to giggle, he really was cute, what's your name? Naruto looked up and gave a huge grin, that warmed AM's heart, Naruto. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. AM walked up to him and held out her hand, AM Ichiraku, Naruto looked at the hand for a few moments before grinning and shaking it, he had just made his first friend, flashback end, after the encounter, she had taken him to Ichirakus and gave him some ramen, needless to say he had happily accepted it and started eating, he still remembered the small frown on Tucha's face when AM had brought him in, after a while the frown had disappeared and was replaced with a soft smile, after then AM had become something akin to a sister towards him and was violently protective over him, she had become his big sister, and he loved her. Stopping the three guys from exiting by barricading the way with cage bunchons, he gave all three of them a hard glare, which they sneered at, I think you are forgetting something, he said to them calmly, while maintaining the glare, they growled at him, obviously pissed off by the fact that he was blocking their path, from what he could tell by their clothes, they were ninja. Essing by their jackets they were chunins, which made it all the worse, the fact that the very people who were meant to protect the village, were abusing their powers made him mad. One of them spoke up, move out of the way, boy. This caused Naruto to sigh, they would have to learn the hard way, he looked up at AM, who looked like she was pleading him to drop it, he could see the concern on her face, which was understandable since she didn't know how strong he was, not being able to live with herself, if Naruto got hurt because of her she shouted, Naruto. It's okay, it doesn't matter, just drop it. The same man who spoke first spoke again, this time full of arrogance, listen to the demon whore's advice, boy, it might just save your life. That served to piss Naruto off, no he was furious, he didn't mind being called a demon, evil, ugly whatever they had thought of in their heads, but, once they insult someone he finds close to him, game over, Naruto looked at AM please, turn around, I don't want you to see this, reluctantly she turned around. The three Chunins looked irritated, this brat had kept them waiting long enough, before any of them could even make a move, they saw red and then black, Naruto sighed before nodding to his clones who just disappeared in a swirl of leaves, it's okay AMD you can turn back instantly she turned around and saw that they were gone, she looked up at Naruto, who looked as if there wasn't a scratch on his body, almost as if she could teleport, she was in front of Naruto and wrapped her arms around him, you dummy, you don't have to do that for me, I don't care if they pay or not, as long as they leave you alone. Naruto gave her a reassuring hug. It's okay AM knee, they needed to be taught a lesson anyway. He drifted off with a smirk, AM just gave him one last squeeze before turning returning around the counter. With a huge vibrant smile she asked him, Suo Atado, the usual. Naruto just nodded whilst making his way to his seat, actually just the one today Nichan AM frowned slightly, she was hoping he would have stayed a while longer, the two of them were close, as close as any brother and sister could be, the fact that they weren't actually related didn't stop that, in fact it almost made their relationship stronger, AM was one person Naruto could actually trust with his life, she wasn't a ninja, but her protectiveness over him went to insane lengths, especially when he first dated Kurinai, she was the only person he ever told during that time, she had been so overprotective over him, asking Kurinai a million questions a minute, it made his heart warm when he saw how much she cared for him, he had often asked her what she enjoyed doing and what she wished to do in the future, she had told him that she had wished to travel the world and learn new cooking techniques and dishes from around the world, the only problem was that it cost thousands of Ryo, something the Achiricus didn't have, so he along with Kurinai, who had gotten extremely close to her as well had decided to help her achieve her dream, one Naruto-sized bowl of Maizo ramen with extra chicken for Mayatado. 
She placed his bowl in front of him before coming around and sitting next to him. So Ni Chan, what did you do today? He asked while opening his chopsticks, muttering a quick eye at Akamasu and started eating. Bayam with a sigh, plopped her head on the counter, honestly Naruto. Nothing, it's been such a long boring day, nothing to do these days, and with Towson off sick Im stuck here, she replied a small frown on her face, that's why I'm glad you are here. Her frown was replaced by a brilliant vibrant smile, only to see Naruto had already finished his bowl. Ugh, that hit the spot, um I'm sorry one e I've got to go, with that he just placed his money on the counter, along with a white envelope and left. Am was red with anger, that little brat. After she was dropping hints for him to stay and keep he company, he goes and does this, next time she sees him. Her thoughts died in her head when she saw the envelope he left on it, it read to A.M. Nee curious she opened it up, inside there was a small note. A.M. Nee, I know it's your dream to travel the world, so now is your chance. Inside it a check worth 1 million ryo. From the bottom of my heart, I love you one chan Love Naruto and Kurenai. A.M. did the one thing anyone would do in this situation. She fainted. Thanks for watching.